So I'm just wondering, I really hope that those from the private would be able to uh, access the same funds or support that will be given by the government. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I hope the authors themselves will be willing uh, to accommodate or to include the private sector. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Honorable Salo, would you also be able to uh, 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 give this committee your uh, uh, legal summation on the portion after leading Trinity. We will also do the same so that we can present that also to the authors and the other members so that we can see if uh, that jurisprudence could be applicable here. Thank you, Honorable Salo. Honorable yes, sir, Mr. Chair. No, but before I recognize the Honorable Gato, then the Honorable Chairman Marco, let me first acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Peter Miguel, Honorable Mohamed Paglas Jr., Honorable Bonifacio Bosita, Honorable Luisa Quaresma, and of course, uh, Governor Congressman Bambi Emano. Yes, uh, Honorable June Gato, you're recognized. You Thank you, Mr. Here. Chair. Uh, I'd like to manifest that I fully support this laudable uh, bills, uh, House Bill uh, 560, number 560 and 2245. Uh, but of course, as I mentioned earlier, this all boils down to funding. So may I ask if uh, there is there any representative from the Department of Budget Management? And may I hear a comment from the DBM? Comment? Uh, see anyone from the DBM who is present? Or if, we, or if anyone from the DBM is authorized to speak on behalf of the DBM, please identify yourself by stating your name and designation in the DBM. Mr. Chairman, I received... A Bible message uh, yesterday from Jean Kabatana of the of DBM Budget Information Legislative Service, and here is the message, Mr. Chairman. Under our... so, uh, sino ang present? Uh, sino ang present? Nan, Mr. Chairman, the big off because of the uh, urgent preparation for today's uh, DBCC hearing in the Senate. And Thank all, you. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Gato, you heard the, uh, we invited the DBM. They are respectfully asked that they be excused for today because they have a DBCC presentation in the Senate today. So I think they were, they are in full force in the Senate for purpose of the budget. Uh, Honorable Gato, before I recognize, Honorable Gato, are you, are we okay? We'll, we'll maybe tomorrow for the budget yes. hearing we will know uh, we will inquire. Yes, thank you, DBM. Chairman you, Marco. Yeah, uh, I have some. Uh, I mean, other questions here. Uh, looking at the Philippines, uh, I would like to know the connectivity issue here, the presence of infrastructure uh, in the different parts of the country in the in the practice uh, that we have right now, or in based on experience. Ilang bang porsyento ng ating mga estudyante that are now connected uh, uh, with the internet uh, in the country now? Ilang, mga ilang porsyento? Yusek uh, Densing? Yusek uh, Densing, would you know that? Uh, Your Honor, I wouldn't know the exact figure, but uh, if you look at it in uh, in just uh, just looking at it as it is right now, almost all our, of our kids are really into the internet. So I mm -hmm. would say... 97, 98% so, are really in the internet. Uh, so as far as access is concerned, as long as they are connected, uh, there's no problem. Yes, Mr. Chair. Your okay. Honor. So, okay. Now, uh, you know, I have also a, a plan with uh, one of the telecom companies uh, and I have also access uh, to internet. And the cost per month that I pay is not 1,500. You can have a plan at 499 pesos if you are just basically concerned with the basic requirements of connectivity. Uh, so, hindi kaya maganda siguro para hindi mo masyadong malaking cost sa ating bansa. We can relook at the, the, the proposed 1,500 can be 500, it can be 1,000, uh, so that uh, hindi masyadong malaki yung proposal natin just in case the Department of Budget will uh, have objection on this amount. Uh, Mr. Chair, I agree with uh, Congressman uh, Mark Go because of uh, competition right now in the industry, internet rates has been going down significantly by 60% for the last two years. So Ms. Mr. Chair, one, the 1,500 may be lowered uh, in terms of its figure, and it can still give enough internet connectivity to our teachers, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Yusek Nitsing. Uh, Chairman Margo, maybe a comsec. Uh, obviously, magaka second hearing to. Maybe we can also invite uh, Globe or PLDT. Baka meron silang pwede masabi rin sa atin in the next hearing on this matter. Or, or Mr. Chair, DOPC yes. for that matter. The, the ICT, the ICT, sorry. Yes. The ICT, the ICT for that matter. is present this morning. I will call them next. Ah, okay. Uh, okay but before I call on the, the ICT and uh, NPC, Maybe you said, uh, uh, then sing baka pwede rin. Alam kong busy rin ang DepEd, ano? But uh, eventually, you really have to create a, you have to make a school mapping eh, of the whole, of every school in the Philippines, kung saan merong connectivity at meron at wala. Kasi meron din kami isang bill that we already approved, the Public uh, Schools of the Future in Technology, and that will require you to be able to coordinate with the ICT, NTC, and the Philippine Space Agency eh. So that we can determine kung sino, uh, ano yung mga paaral na sa buong Pilipinas ang may connectivity na, whether by satellite or any of the telcos. Sana magka-school mapping na kayo or you can start creating that roadmap na. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, we will be doing it because part of our engagement with the ICT, uh, especially during the start of the year when we had uh, we had communications with them during the Oplan Balik Eskwela, I specifically asked from them uh, to do some what we call management by exception. In the management by exception, we focus on issues and concerns and focus our resources in that area. Although this is a biased statement on the part of the DepEd because we want internet connectivity in all our schools, regardless of where they are, we were asking the ICT to uh, forego their Wi-Fi for all in favor of human resource investment in our education sector by identifying all schools in the country where there is least internet co connectivity and put the satellites there as a priority, satellites or cell site for that matter. That's what we call human resource investment. We are prioritizing the growth of, the, of our country's human resource through education. So, prioritize lang sana muna. Uh, Sing, then, sing pati Philippine Space Agency because meron silang uh, satellites that they've already launched and they will launch soon yung bago, yung mula, MULA. Baka naman pwedeng ma-tweak yun para... Uh, yung Philippine Space Agency yun eh. They already have two sets up already. But then may bago silang ilalaunch eh, yung mula. So maybe they can tweak that na makatulong sa, ano, sa interconnectivity. Ang sagot sa amin last Congress was hindi pwede kasi pag umuulan, hindi na raw nag-work yung satellites. I don't know if that still applies up to now. Pero yun ang sagot dati, you remember. Share yes. go? Yeah, yeah. If they will do the inventory of uh, the different schools, would you consider doing also for the private schools? Anyway, all of the schools under is are under uh, you know DepEd. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we're talking about the whole sixty thousand plus schools, whether private or public. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Governor Bambi. Uh, uh, Congressman Bambi, Mr. sorry, Mr. Chair, I. Uh... Actually, DC Tech was able to visit visit my office, and the pro their 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 internet, I believe, Mister Chair, is more reliable because they will be using fiber optics, and they are actually it's cheaper for them, Mister Chair, because they were already able to secure a contract with the electric cooperatives to co to in to connect the fiber optics to the schools, and the. Uh, and uh, they're cheaper, Mr. Chair, because you do not have to actually do the infra of digging because they will just connect from the uh, pole lines of the electric cooperatives. May I know if uh, uh, what's the take of uh, the Department of Education, Mr. Chair? Because they are actually willing, even to GIDA areas, they're willing to connect. DC Tech is willing to connect. While they will connect, of course, we will only have to pay the monthly uh, payment uh, or subscription, Mr. Chair. Isik din sing. I think, uh, could you comment on that? That's a technical question, Mr. Chair. But uh, to our mind, as long as the education sector is prioritized by government for purposes of internet co connectivity, whether it can be from the private or public sector, uh, we are open to that. Uh, we are in approval of that. Kasi po, ang kailangan talaga natin mag-invest. The term here, Mr. Chair, is we invest in our children because they are the future Filipinos. And uh, the future Filipinos or the future of our country is dependent on the, the educational 
uh, attainment, ability, and learning of our children today. So kung mababa ang kalaman ng mga bata ngayon, 20 years from now, mababa ang kalaman ng Pilipino sa kinabukasan. Yun lang pong gusto. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, follow up lang po, Mr. Yes. Chair. Kong iman. With all due respect, Mano nga. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chair, ito na lang po. While uh, I, I don't think that any of member of Congress here also, sir, uh, uh, came here, uh, sat down, joined the committee hearing because we want to destroy the future of the of the next gen, gen, next generation of this country. I think all of us are here because we want to improve education. This is how I look at it, sir. They already came to the office. They have a proposal. Question is, who will they, they talk to with DepEd? You know, you give them people like uh, the secretary of the secretary, it will take them forever. If we are in a hurry, if we want it passed, then we need to somebody to talk in your to talk to in your office. And, you know, I'll, I, I'll, I may even accompany them there, sir. Mr. Chair, one person, ako Yusik Den Sing. Uh, yeah, that would be wonderful. Can I get the contact number of Yusik Den Sing, mm -hmm. and uh, so so that we'll be able to uh, actually coordinate with the uh, with this schedule, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Yusik Den Sing's. Uh, Official number will be provided by the committee. Bambi, okay lang sa yes, yes. the namin. Thank you, Yusik Den Singh. Uh, Chairman Go, you wanted to... But before we recognize Chairman Go, may I also acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Charisse Ann Hernandez. Morning. The Honorable Adrian Michael Amatong. And the Honorable Siti Amina Dimaporo. Yes, Chairman Go. Yeah, you know, uh, this pandemic has made us realize that uh, this is very important, itong connectivity. This should have been addressed even before the pandemic, but it became so openly clear to us that this is supposed to be the approach that we should have taken a long time ago. Uh, so I think uh, it's really important uh, that we really provide this and probably we'll look at the other side of the coin, not only in terms of providing internet connectivity to teachers, but also to the students. Eh. But of course, this is a bigger uh, uh, aspect of uh, what I, I would like to look at. Uh, and probably this is an item that we will consider in the EDCOM uh, too. No, so uh, maganda itong ano natin, and uh, I am very excited that uh, lahat ng mga schools natin dapat uh, at saka yung mga teachers, mga technical sabi sila, uh, internet sabi also, uh, kasi meron mga other teachers na medyo averse sila sa technology. So I think this is an opportunity that we train everybody along this direction, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Go. Uh, you think dancing yung uh, NAYAP is being is, is still up and about, no? In Baguio? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. In the, uh, 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 in the district uh, in uh, of Chairman Go. So that is where upskilling happens for our teachers. Uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Both sir. private and public. Opo. Sila Open po, they, they provide po for the training yeah. of our teachers. Yes. Uh, the courses are whole year round? Opo, whole year round. Yes. What about for upskilling tungkol sa technology? Uh, I don't know if that's part of the whole... Uh, uh, curriculum of, uh, but I'll check Mr. Uh, Mr. Yes, Chair, Your Honor. That would be appreciated by the committee. Before we proceed, kasama rin natin, I think, ang DICT. Is there anyone from DICT who is present who will be able to uh, enlighten the committee if meron na silang school map, uh, mapping of the whole Philippines kung saan meron mga internet or medyo mahina pa? Anyone from DICT? Mr. Justin Ordunia, are you with us? <laughs> Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, Justin Ordunia from the DICP Legislative Liaison Division. Uh, at the moment, po, we don't have the data on what USEC Dinsing of DepEd is requesting. But maybe in the next meeting, or we can submit the official position paper of our, uh, of our department about this uh, school sites in, relations to, in relation to the free Wi-Fi program of our department. Ma'am Justine, uh, uh, pareho naman kayo na sa executive department. Maybe you can relate to the DepEd para makuha yung, yung location ng 60,000 schools in basic education that covers both public and private. Baka pwedeng niyong matulungan ng DepEd to be able to have a school mapping on, on connectivity. Yes, sir. Noted po, Mr. Chen. Thank you. And uh, hopefully soon you'll be able to provide the committee. Sa so NTC, who is present from the NTC, Deputy Commissioner John Paolo or Engineer Anna or Engineer Mary. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, this Good is Deputy morning. Commissioner John Paolo Salvahan, Mr. Chair. Magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga po. Have you been following the discussions? Uh, what we are looking for is really 
uh, help from uh, from NTC, the ICT, for the Department of Education in Congress to be able to create a, a school mapping where in the 60,000 basic education schools covering both public and private, uh, we'll, uh, we will be able to determine the connectivity of each school. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, help the Department of Education in Congress in that matter? Yes, Mr. Chair. We will provide the necessary data in the Philippine roadmap of areas wherein there's uh, internet coverage. But as I was informed now by our technical team, Mr. Chair, there is about around 80% of uh, cities and municipalities which have coverage. Although uh, we have to take note that in those cities and uh, municipalities, not all barangays within them have uh, coverage. It depends on the uh, operation, actual operation of the telco industry, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Deputy Commissioner, that's why I think yung ginagawa natin here is per school na eh. Uh, DepEd has identified the 60,000 schools so that mas specific tayo. Hindi naman natin magagawa siguro overnight lahat ito. Pero if we begin already uh, the school mapping, malaking tulong po yan para sa public schools of the future in technology natin. Malaking ano yun para sa internet allowance that we are talking about. So we will appreciate if you and DepEd through USEC then SING can get together uh, in order to be able to just plot. Kahit beginnings lang, di ba? Hindi naman natin masubar, baka hindi naman kaya kaagad-agad, but uh, at least may beginnings na yung pag-plot nitong school mapping na to. Yes, Mr. Chair, we will work with the uh, DepEd through USEC Densing, uh, Mr. Chair, who I, who I was able to work with before already, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. USEC Densing, so you will contact na lang uh, uh, NTC and the ICT, so yung school mapping ninyo for purpose of connectivity. Thank you. Uh, with that, Siguro, with the permission of the authors, could we give uh, everyone some time to be able to, uh, especially the DBM? We can inform. We inform, but maybe it's more long. But if you, uh, one minute suspension. Yung, yung connective din, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, resume ko muna. Ay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> this committee meeting is uh, resumed. Uh, Chairman Bargo. Yeah. Uh, when we invite, we also invite uh, the other telcos uh, like the Smart Globe, uh, Dito, Jan, I mean Dito, <laughs> and, and other telcos that we have right now, uh, including, of course, the ICT and TC. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Two seconds. Just, just quickly. I, I think uh, through Congress, through inter intercession, we can actually require these telecommunications companies to prioritize these schools where there is no internet. It's just uh, your your intercession is very critical, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Chair, just for the information of uh, USEC uh, Densing, uh, I, have, I met with your uh, SDS in Baguio plus the regional director, and we are doing mapping for the 67 public schools in Baguio. We would like to have a, a master plan for every school, uh, not only in terms of uh, facilities, but uh, the layout of the school. Uh, kasi medyo iba-ibang layout, eh. walang coherence and uh, uniformity yung mga schools namin doon. And uh, with this discussion that we have, we already include uh, yung uh, connectivity uh, among all the six, seven public schools in the city of Baguio. Thank Mr. you, Chair. Thank Go. You. So with that, uh, Comsec, we will schedule another meeting. We should invite the telco companies. We should make sure that the DBM and DOF are also present. And uh, Comsec, paki apprise na sila. Ito yung issue. So that they, when they come to the meeting, they will be prepared for the response so that we don't need to have a PWG anymore. Pwede as a whole na. The committee as a whole can, can tackle the issue. So with that, uh, with the permission of the authors and the members present, we will uh, suspend consideration first of this of these measures until uh, uh, another meeting. Is there any objection? Uh, yes. Uh, Attorney Estrada is recognized. Oh, wait. Yes, Attorney Estrada. Mr. Chair, may we just be allowed to manifest our uh, proposal to the authors on those two bills before? Yes. Thank you. May I uh, proceed? 
May, may I proceed? Uh, yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and the honorable members of the committee and to our uh, authors, uh, Representative Franz Castro and uh, Honorable Stella Kimbo. Uh, on behalf of the private education sector, we just would like to appeal for inclusion um, uh, of the private school teachers in the proposed uh, monthly internet allowance. Um, in particular, at, at least the ESC teachers, the teachers in the ESC accredited schools and uh, the senior high school voucher participating schools. Mga nasa ano lang po ito, mga nasa 80,000 uh, private school teachers lang po ito. I just would like to um, to follow up on the uh, the manifestation of Congressman Ron Salo earlier on the constitutional basis. Uh, mine is um, with reference to the equity provision of the Constitution, Article 3, Section 1. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. The inclusion of the private school teachers is about equity. There should be no dichotomy in addressing teachers' needs. Those in the private schools also deserve assistance from the government or from the state. It's about teacher in empowerment when we talk about um, the right to uh, to access to the internet. And, and an empowered teacher is an efficient teacher. The quality of our teachers is key to ensuring quality education. And uh, we we laud the uh, the authors uh, for for the bill, but we uh, we fervently appeal to kindly include our private school teachers, at least those who are already under the government program subsidy program, uh, at, at the very least the ESC and the senior high school participating teachers. Po, maraming salamat po. Thank you, Attorney Estrada. Uh, please also provide the committee with your with your legal paper on on allowance for uh, private schools kung pa kung pwede uh, based on the trinity and the trinity case in the US and of course our own constitution yes mr chair we'll thank, do that thank you uh in the in, in the spirit of, of fairness since kaninang umaga pa rin natin kasama before we uh, uh suspend consideration of this measure of these measures first i acknowledge the presence of the honorable fernando cabredo uh, welcome po and of course, uh, could I ask uh, for a statement, a brief statement from the from one of our guests uh, from Teachers Dignity Coalition, uh, Mr. Benjo Basas. Benjo? Yes, uh, sir. Magandang uh, umaga po at uh, salamat po sa recognition. Sir, uh, of course, no, um, we are in, uh, uh, we fully support no, the measures, the, the proposed measures no, by Honorable uh, Castro and uh, Honorable Kimbo. Of course, no. Um, but um, we just want to express no this um info. Uh, perhaps no. Uh, this is um more of an information po no rather than a manifestation. No, that um in November 2020, no 2020, no. Uh, meron pong nilabas sa DepEd Order Number 38. Ito po yung may kinalaman don sa DepEd Communication sa Expenses Reimbursement. Retroactive po siya from March no to December of uh, that year 2020. No, kung saan po nagsimula yung ating um pandemic no and unfortunately hindi po ito naibigay no so mukhang kailangan po nating i-check no uh, paano po ang nangyari bakit hindi no, ito uh, na naibigay sa mga teachers po natin no and then nung July 1 2021 po another um, um the DepEd uh, issued another um memoranda no memorandum no na nagbibigay naman po no supposedly ng 1 million um DepEd SIM cards no na bibigay sa lahat ng teachers and uh, personnel loaded with initial uh, 34 um, gigabytes na load consumable for the rest of the year, for the whole year po. No? So, yan po yung ilan sa aming experience sa DepEd. And just to clarify, yung, um, yung cash allowance po na 5,000 pesos, no, uh, dyan na po manggagaling lahat, no? internet at communication expenses, annual medical and physical examination, and uh, teaching supplies, um, ala, uh, teaching supplies, no? tangible or intangible. No? That's um, actually 3,500 noong 2020, tumaas po ng 5,000 noong 2021 and 2022 ngayong taon po ay um, um, na-maintain po niya yung uh, 5,000. Napakaliit po nito no, dahil annual po yan, hindi po talaga yan kakasya. No? Kaya po yung, uh, yung measure, no, yung uh, proposal po na gawin itong 1,500, of course, no, nagkakasundo naman po lahat ng teachers organization sa Pilipinas no, na dapat po itong um, ibigay. No? At uh, kung Ma dapat nga, mas mataas ba po, no? although narinig po natin yung sinasabi po ni uh, Honorable Go, tama naman po yun. Ano po. But we have no, to, um, to link no, with, um, with the telcos din po. No? And then in fact, no, sana nga po ito itawagin na communications uh, um, 
internet and communication allowance to. Baka po kasi ang mangyari po dito ay gawin itong um gawin po itong um, exclusive no for internet no. Eh samantalang hindi lang naman internet ang uh, kailangan po na gaso sa ng teacher um distance learning man yan o hindi may pandemic o wala kailangan kailangan po ng ating mga teachers ang internet and communication um allowance and, and the assistance po from our government. Maraming maraming salamat po uh, Mr. Chair at uh, sa lahat po ng miyembro ng uh, Kapulungan ito. Thank you po. So, so Benjo, just to clarify ano, ang suggestion niyo is that baka pwede pag-isipan rin na i-consolidate ito dun sa teacher allow uh, teaching allowance. Yun yung suggestion niyo, Benjo. Uh, we have existing din po kasi no we have existing ang mangyayari po niyan kasi no uh, kapag ka po ta- kapag pa- ka po ito ay uh, na isa batas no baka po mangyari matanggal no yung uh, 5000 na cash allowance no so dapat po there is at least no a provision po na sinasubsume ba ito or ito ba ay separate no uh, kasi po um kailangan kailangan naman po natin po no yung lahat no yung pareho no yung internet allowance and then yung um Um, ang tawag po natin diyan teaching supplies allowance supposedly pero gina- at chok allowance ka po no tinawag na po ito ng DepEd ngayon na na, na cash allowance and uh, ang medyo kakatwa po dito isinama rito yung um yung um, um medical no and physical examination po no na tinatakda po ng ating Magna Carta no for public school teachers so this should be a separate ano po no uh, this should be a, a separate um policy po dapat no kasi Magna Carta po ito eh mas mataas po ito no kaysa doon sa ibang mga uh, allowances no na sinasabi and uh, of course no this is um um, um another uh, discussion po siguro no uh, i understand po there is a separate bill po no for the amendments of um the existing Magna Carta for public school teachers Mr. Chair thank you po Thank you, uh, uh, Benjo Basas. Uh, with that, oh, let's suspend consideration first of House Bills number five six zero. Mr. Chair, uh, Honorable parang, Castro, you recognize? Meron din po yata ang position yung Act Alliance of Concerned Teachers. Pwede rin po natin silang marinig. Sige. So, adyan ba, Mr. Chair, si ano no, si Mr. Vladimir Katua? Mr. Vladimir from uh, ACT uh, Act Party List, are you with ano, us? Act te- uh, Alliance Act teachers? of Concerned Teachers, Alliance Philippines, hindi sila partners. Okay, uh, maraming salamat uh, Mr. Chair and Honorable Members of this committee. So ang uh, pambansang union po sa panguna na Act, uh, Act Philippines ay sumusuporta, lubos na sumusuporta sa House Bill na kung saan ay sinasabing dapat ay magkaroon lang 1,500 internet allowance no ang bawat guro sa bawat buwan nito no uh, tama ano may pangangailangan ngayon Mr. Chair and honorable members of this committee no sa katunayan Mr. Chair no ay nung nakaraang pandemya ay halos dalawang buwan ng aming sahod Mr. Chair ay naibigay namin hindi lamang sa internet kundi sa may kinalaman sa distance learning no tama rin yung mga binabanggit Mr. Chair na hindi lamang ito pang uh, turo kundi gamit namin no, namin to sa pang research, report, remedial communication. At sa katunayan, Mr. Chair ay uh, naglulunsad ngayon ng mga assessment, no? At tamang-tama nandito na rin Mr. Chair si ang aming kasama sa DepEd si uh, Sir Den Singh, no? Na, na ngayon ay nagkakaroon ng amplified numeracy assessment and comprehensive rapid literacy assessment na kung saan maraming mga guro at maraming mga elementary uh, students ang namumoblema dahil nga po walang mga internet, wala pong load ang mga internet ng mga estudyante no at saka mga guro no naniniwala tayo talagang malaking bulto ang pagkukuha na natin ito pero mas isipin natin investment po natin ito tandaan natin dalawang taon na wala tayo sa klase at sa dalawang taong ito kinatunayan naman po ng World Bank no at pinutunayan naman po ng mga PISA report mga assessment na talagang mababa yung kalidad ng edukasyon kaya dapat mag-invest tayo rito no kaya malaking tulong ito Mr. Chair na kung ito ay masya sa batas at idagdag doon sana Mr. Chair sana hindi mapahirapan yung guro kung ito ay masya sa batas hindi mapahirapan yung guro sa pag-claim na itong uh, alternate allowance nito ilama Mr. Chair maraming salamat Thank you uh, Sir Vladimir and uh, again uh, sana maging present tayo sa next meeting ko natin With that I with the permission of the authors and the members present uh, House Bi- the deliberations is House Bill number 560 and 2245 are hereby suspended The next matter on our agenda would be the implementation of the mother tongue, but I have asked permission from the Honorable Mark Go, one of the authors, that we proceed first with the next matter as it will merely be uh, for purposes of sponsoring uh, said bills. The deliberation on bills on the Academic Recovery and Accessible Learning ARAL program. First is House Bill number 3721 by the Honorable Gachalian. I have spoken to the Honorable Gachalian yesterday. He sent a letter 
Uh, first, asking that we defer uh, consideration of the House measure because he had a previous engagement, but he said that uh, it would be fine if the committee can sponsor said measure. Is there any member who wishes to sponsor House Bill number 371? Okay. Honorable Caster is recognized. Um. So on behalf of um, Honorable Representative uh, Rex Gachalian, uh, may I move, Mr. Chair, that the explanatory note of his House Bill number 3721 uh, serve as his sponsorship speech. Second the motion. There's a motion by the Honorable Counselor, duly signed by the Honorable Salo, that the explanatory note of House Bill number 3721 be made its sponsorship remarks for purpose of this committee. Is there any objection? Chairing and none, same is approved. House Bill number 3847 by the Honorable Tambunting. Is the Honorable Tambunting present? The Honorable Tambunting is not present, but the Honorable Mark Go is recognized. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I would like uh, to move that the explanatory note of House Bill 3847 be adopted as the sponsorship message of Representative uh, Tambunting. I so move, uh, Mr. Chair. There's a motion by the Honorable Mark Go that House Bill explanatory note of House Bill 3847 be made as its sponsorship remarks for purpose of if this committee. Is there any objection? Chair, hear none. Same is approved. House Bill number 4240, authored by uh, uh, this representation, uh, is basically the same as House Bill number 3721-3847, except that uh, House Bill 4240 calls for not only bridging programs during the break, but also during the academic calendar. Uh, may its uh, explanatory note, note also uh, serve as uh, part of this, this uh, sponsored measure. With that, uh, with the permission of all members, let's uh, suspend consideration until uh, the next... Uh, until, if we have time later on, we can go back to it, but I just wanted it uh, on record that it is now uh, with the committee. The next matter on the agenda is the deliberation on resolution on disaster resilient master design and architectural plan for basic education schools in coastal areas. House resolution number 289. The author has been present since uh, the beginning of this meeting with the permission of the Honorable Go. May we uh, ask first the Honorable Cleo to sponsor this House resolution. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of this committee, distinguished uh, resource speakers, before anything else, I would like to extend this, this representation, sympathy and prayers to survivors of the devastation brought about by Typhoon Scardo and Henry just last week, as well as the magnitude 7 earthquake that shook the country about a month before. We, the people of the Nagat Islands, can relate to affected communities and provinces in their ongoing struggle to recover from these disasters. It has been almost eight months since this representation stood before the plenary to plead for the sake of its constituents in the wake of the destruction and devastation left behind by Typhoon Odette. As is known to everyone here, the Category 5 storm ravaged our homes, knocked down buildings, and destroyed livelihoods last December 16. Among those affected and damaged were educational facilities. According to DepEd, 85% of classrooms in Dinagat Islands alone were totally damaged by Odette. As a consequence, 354 classrooms need to be replaced, in addition to the 107 classrooms which need to undergo repairs. In sum, according to DepEd, the rehabilitation of schools, including the procurement and of materials and equipment, would cost at least 1.7 billion pesos. School buildings provide other services and functions integral to the community. They serve as evacuation centers in times of disaster. They provide venues of com for community activities, training and even livelihood programs for nearby households. During the pandemic, Many schools have also doubled as quarantine facilities. We also see the importance of school, school buildings during elections as they serve as polling precincts where we exercise our right to vote. I have seen the impact of school buildings 
and the lack thereof firsthand. As we continue to rebuild the Nagat Islands from Typhoon Udet, our communities have persevered through the lack of sufficient quarantine and evacuation centers in the disasters that came and went. We may do with the tents and makeshift prisons in the last elections. And even now, we are still trying our best to resume face-to-face -face classes despite the overwhelming lack of school buildings and facilities. While I salute and honor the endurance and perseverance of my people, we cannot simply applaud the resilience. We must help build and strengthen it. And we can only do this by learning from our past and applying them to our present. That is why today, this representation is introducing House Resolution 289, which forwards a disaster resilient master design for schools. It mandates the DPWH and the DepEd to enter into an interdepartmental memorandum of agreement for the establishment and implementation of disaster resilient master design and architectural plans for all primary and secondary schools in coastal areas. And this resolution encapsulates one of the most important lessons we have learned in the succession of disasters we have survived as a nation in recent years, that we need to be proactive and not just reactive in responding to disasters. We cannot simply rebuild our schools and then wait for the next calamity to knock it down. We need to ensure that we build in place of what was lost will last longer and stand stronger than what came before. As such, I call on the members of this committee to support this resolution and on the head officials of DPWH and DepEd to support the objectives and fast track its implementation. As the principal author of this resolution, I implore the committee to move for its immediate passage. Thank you for the privilege of speaking, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kong Ekleo. Uh, Kong Ekleo, no, para maliwanag lang. I, I know Yusik Dinsing is in a rush. No? The speaker uh, wants to talk to him. But ito lang naman, simple lang naman ata yung request. Eh. The resolution is merely asking that the DepEd and the DPWH come together for a MOA para magkaroon ng design na disaster resilient. Is there any objection on the part of the DepEd? Yes, sir, Chair, in behalf of DepEd, we have no objection to the resolution. In fact, that is aligned with the pronouncement of President Bongbong Marcos that all our schools, especially in the areas where it is regularly hit by calamities, should be resilient or disaster resilient. So, natutugma po yan, uh, uh, Your Honor, sa pananaw namin sa DepEd and with the President. You signing give us a few more minutes, ano? DPWH uh, Director Bureau of Design Engineer Edwin Mat Matungwihan, are you with us? Yes, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, narinig mo naman ano? Uh, simple lang naman ata yung mga gusto lang niya magsama po kayo ng DepEd uh, magkaroon ng master plan para disaster resilient dun sa mga school buildings na gagawin sa mga coastal, coastal areas. Area, yes. uh, do you have any objection to this or meron na ba? Um, uh, ano, let me read, uh, allow me to read the position paper of the DPWS regarding... Uh, is that brief or is that a long position paper? paper? Very brief, sir. Only Very one page, uh, uh, letter from our secretary. It's uh, dated September 9, 2022. Honorable Romanti Romulo, representative, Lone District of Pasig City, Chairperson, Committee on Basic Education and Culture, House of Representatives, Quezon City. Subject... The House Resolution Number 289. Dear Representative uh, Romulo, this has reference to your attached letter dated September 8, 2022, on the above subject, House Resolution Number 289, introduced by Representative yes. Alan Juan D. Ecleo of the Lone District of Dinagat Islands. In this regards, the Department of Public Works and Highways would like to express our full support to the said resolution to establish and implement the memorandum of agreement with a depth end for the establishment of a disaster resilient master design and architectural plan for all primary and secondary schools in coastal areas in the Philippines. 
to avoid repeated expenditures and prevent further damage and loss of life and ensure that schools in the most calamity prone areas, particularly in coastal areas, are disaster resilient to storm surges and tsunamis. Thank you and best regards. Very truly yours. Signed by Secretary Manuel M. Bonoan, this department. Thank you, Engineer Edwin. That uh, letter is very welcome. Please provide the committee with a letter if not yet provided. So to the members, I think uh, DepEd and DPWH are in full support. What is the pleasure of the members of this committee? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Scouter Dale, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a very laudable measure, Mr. Chairman. So therefore, I would like to move that the members of this committee be co-authors of this measure. Uh, yes. Okay. There's a motion. Honorable Dale, that we adopt uh, House Resolution Number 289 and duly signed by the Honorable Gato. Is there any objection? Chair hearing none. Same is approved. House Resolution Number 289 is hereby adopted. There's another resolution by the Honorable Dale that all members present who wish to become co authors signify said intention to the COMSEC with the permission, of course, of the authors. And uh, they will become co-authors. Is there any objection? No objection from the author? No. <laughs> said motion is approved. Congratulations, <laughs> Honorable Ecleo. We now proceed very briefly you know, uh, to uh, deliberation of bills suspending the implementation of mother tongue as medium of instruction for kindergarten to grade three. There are two measures, House Bill number 2188, by myself and House Bill number 3925 by the Honorable Chairman Mark Go. In the interest of time, I know Kailan Omalis ni Yusik Dinsing, you know? could we ask the uh, Dep Ed through you, Yusik Dinsing if they have an official position on these matters? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with respect to House Bill 2188 and House Bill 3925, the Department of Education has no objection to these two bills. In fact, during the opening session of the Basic Committee on Education and Culture, we have made our position that the position of the President of the Republic of the Philippines is for us to return to the bilingual uh, mode of teaching. And while we say that the Section 4 of uh, Republic Act 10533, which is requiring the use of mother tongue for K to 3, we are still in the opinion that this can still be used in areas in the country where English and Filipino are lingua francas that are not being used inside uh, within the community. The mother tongue can still be used as an exception, or the mother tongue can be used as supplement uh, while teaching in the uh, schools by our learners, but with the primary languages of English and Filipino. Uh, it is in our opinion that this will fast track the learning capability of our children, especially so that with the result of the recent uh, uh, PISA assessment and other international assessment, I believe or we believe that uh, 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 in the words of uh, Vice President and Secretary Sara Duterte, we are lost in the forest. Uh, that was her term, that we were focusing too much on on listening too much to the expert advice. Uh, yet, in fact, this expert advice has not gone good to our educational system. <laughs> and we are also in the position, Mr. Uh, Chair, that uh, while there are experts that will give tell us the importance of using the mother tongue, using international studies as basis, I, we believe that since our country, even prior to this republic, uh, the enhancement of the K-12 to law, uh, we have been used to the uh, uh, English and Filipino as media of instruction. In fact, in the assessments prior to that, we are not dead last uh, compared to the other countries because we already have that initial know-how of English and Filipino during our preschooling days. We have been using that, especially in areas outside of the communities where, of course, English is, and Filipino are not uh, uh, the medium of instruction or the lingua franca of the community. And again, these are languages that we have been continuously using uh, even before we enter kindergarten. So in other words, our children, our learners, upon entering uh, school has already that knowledge of using English and Filipino. And we do believe that if we go back to that, 
uh, medium of instruction, starting with the kindergarten, we may be able to fast track the learnings of our children. Because again, we repeat that prior to our learners going into the school system, they have been introduced already with English in Filipino as their everyday lingua franca, wherever they are in the country. Uh, with this, your uh, honor, it is the position of DepEd and the position of Vice President and Secretary Sara Duterte. And again, as pronounced by President Bongbong Marcos for us to return a bilingual system of, of uh, instruction. Uh, our comment on the two bills, uh, your honor, is the timing itself. Uh, timing that if it is, will, is this will if this will be passed into law now we will have enough time to prepare for the next school year. On the secondary reasoning, your honor, uh, having nineteen modules translated into mm -hmm. different uh, uh, mother tongue is cost inefficient for government. So in other words, you're trying to to make uh, materials for 18 languages and and uh, spreading out all over the country. Unlike if you will only have one medium of instruction, either English and Filipino, we can make a mass produce our learning materials which can easily be spread and cost efficient for government. Yeah. So this is something that the committee, uh, this is our position and we do hope that the committee consider our position of this on this matter, Mr. Chair. And uh, we uh, on, on board online is our two assistant secretaries for curriculum and instruction, uh, Assistant Secretary G.H. Ambat and Assistant Secretary Alma Torrio, together with the Director Joyce Andaya of our Bureau of uh, Curriculum Development. Uh, will be on board to uh, to ask ask to respond to any questions of the committee, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you, Yusik Dinsing. With the permission of the members, uh, Yusik Dinsing has to go, but there will be other representatives from DepEd. Yusik Dinsing, thank you very much. Okay, with that, uh, let's proceed first. Uh, uh, on my case, can can uh, the reason why I filed House Bill Number Two One Eight Eight is that. Uh, I, I, I value uh, our dialects, our mother tongue. But then my point is, uh, unless the DEPED is prepared to implement mother tongue, it may not be of uh, good service to our students. My only my reason under the bill is first, uh, the school mapping must be done by the Department of Education to be able to identify all the dialects spoken in the uh, different schools and to make sure that all the teachers are uh, uh, properly upskilled with the different dialects and also for learning materials to be present. The next uh, bill is House Bill number 3925 by the Honorable Go. The Honorable Go is recognized. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, in, in my bill, uh, I propose that we suspend the implementation of the mother tongue policy while the EDCOM 2 conducts a comprehensive evaluation and assessment of said policy. Uh, last July 25, uh, uh, on his very first SONA, uh, President Marcos expressly called for the examination of the medium of instruction used in our schools. On his inaugural speech a month prior, he reiterated his call to strengthen our people's proficiency in English and to examine the materials we use in teaching. Even from within DepEd family, we had similar sentiments. In an interview uh, with ANC, DepEd Undersecretary Epimaco Densing stated that English and Filipino should be used as the medium of instruction in schools as early as kindergarten with the mother tongue only being used as an exemption. Uh, the PISA is uh, one example uh, showing our performance uh, is uh, not really good. Out, our reading problem is also very much highlighted in the 2019 Southeast Asian Primary Learning Metrics. The 2018 National Achievement Test showed poor performance among the pioneer products of MTB MLE. This is the uh, uh, mother tongue uh, based uh, multilingual education compared with the previous year's NAT. Likewise, the results of the teams uh, show that learners under the policy on bilingual education outperformed the learners under the MTB MLE. 
The, there are also several literature showing learning a second language, such as English, is easier for children during formative years, and there are cognitive benefits in bilingualism among children. I believe that only a truly comprehensive assessment and evaluation of the policy can put an end to this issue. Otherwise, we'll be going around in circles. The enactment of Republic Act 11899, which creates the EDCOM 2, presents an opportunity to finally address the issues surrounding the MTB yeah. forum and with the adequate resources. It is in this regard that House Bill 903925 calls for the suspension of the implementation of the mother tongue policy and amend EDCOM 2 act to expressly include in the scope of the national assessment and evaluation the implementation of the MTB MLE policy, including its impact on academic performance and employment preparedness of Filipino students. In view of the foregoing, Mr. Chair, uh, the approval of this measure is earnestly sought. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Chairman Marco. Just to clarify, po, no? because we already stated, and I think uh, one of the authors, Margo, is also present here. Uh, the suspension of the mother tongue does not include sign language. Ang sign language continues. Yes. Sign language is, not, uh, is, 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 is different from the topics being discussed uh, uh, under these two bills. So mother tongue should not be affected. Uh, uh, sign language should not be affected. In fact, we want to promote the use uh, of uh, sign language always. So just to be clar uh, clear on that matter. Before we proceed, uh, uh, with the permission of the members, ano, alam ko ma ma maraming gusto magtanong, but si Dr. Casanova has been patiently waiting for his turn since uh, the beginning. So uh, with due respect to Dr. Arthur Casanova, may we call on him first? Um, galang galang na tagapangulo, uh, Romanti Romulo ng Committee on Basic Education and Culture at sa lahat po ng uh, mga galang-galang ng mga kasapi ng committee ito, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, bago ko po uh, basahin ang pahayag ng uh, atindig ng Komisyon sa Wikang Pilipino, ay nais ko pong iparating sa lawas na ito na Ang uh, Filipino Sign Language po ay bahagi na po ng uh, Komisyon sa Wikang Pilipino at may isang unit at isang espasyo na po sila sa aming opisina. At nais ko munang iparating sa inyo ang pahayag ng Filipino Sign Language. Um, on HB 3925's exemption of Filipino Sign Language from its proposed suspension of the MTBMLE implementation, Indicator 3, some observations and recommendations. A statement submitted by the Filipino Sign Language National Network for the fifth meeting of the House Committee on Basic Education and Culture, 13th of September 2022. At ito po ang kanilang winika. This network recognizes the gratitude, the exemption of Filipino Sign Language or FSL from the proposed suspension of the implementation of the MTB MLE in K-12, K-3. However, may we present some observations and recommendations for consideration by the House Committee on Basic Education and Culture in its legislative efforts. One. Use of FSL as medium of instruction is a given for accessibility of all deaf learners. Using FSL as the medium of instruction in the K-3 as well as at all levels of education, that is, early basic higher and continuing education, is ensured as a form of accessibility by RA 11106, the Filipino Sign Language Act of 2018. This, in turn, is rooted in state commitment to the UN Convention to the Rights of Persons and Disabilities, Articles 92430, ratified by Congress in 2008. Two, accessibility is distinct from recognition as mother tongue. 
As Prey Section 2 of HB 3295 appears to have taken this two to be the same. Accessibility deals primarily with the delivery of education, whereas FSL recognition as mother tongue is much broader and includes accessibility. Also, accessibility relates more to the disability of dimensions, while mother tongue, mother language recognition is part of the linguistic and cultural dimension of the deaf identity. Identifying both as distinct from each other aligns itself to the learner-centeredness of the inclusive education framework. With a verbal classification, with the legislative staff of Representative Mark Go on 6 of September 2022, we were given reassurance that the exemption of FSL includes not only its use as a medium of instruction, that is, for accessibility in all subjects and levels, but also as mother tongue in K-3. to In practical terms, this means the mother tongue subject in K-3 to shall continue as currently practiced. Recommendation. Issue and implement a deaf ed policy on accessibility for deaf learners in basic education to ensure that the fund fundamental rights to both language and education are respected and fully realized. Three, promoting, promoting the unique dual identity of the deaf. That that is the use of FSL not only from a disability perspective, ensuring accessibility, but also in a linguistic cultural context on par with all other languages. The traditional view of deafness solely as disability was the basis for special education, which typically meant segregated education. The progressive modern view of deafness as culture must be propagated actively also within the entire institution of deaf ed. The traditional view runs deep and shall probably still remain for years to come. In fact, the exemption of FSL in the matter at hand may even be indicative also of this. But as described above, the deaf ed has already begun to open its doors to the deaf community of advocates as has ever as as has never been seen before. We remain hopeful that it shall continue until the second dimension of the deaf identity has been fully integrated in its policies and programs. Recommendation. Comply with the state commitment to international and Philippine law by promoting a linguistic cultural view of deafness among all the branches and agencies of the government. Four, the irony that FSL is not officially recognized by deaf ed as mother tongue. Currently, only 19 spoken languages are recognized as mother tongue languages. Presumably, FSL is problematic because of the requirement of a system of orthography in the four minima policy. Recommendation. Issue a deaf ed policy recognizing FSL as L1 and mother language identifying appropriate minima for a visual spatial languages. Five. Efforts of the Deaf Ed Bureaus and agencies in relation to FSL that we are aware of. Bureau of Curriculum and Development, Formulation of Most Essential Learning Competencies, MELCs, for FSL, Mother Tongue Subject in K-3 2020. Validation of finalization of FSL Research Proposal and Instrument 2020. Monitoring and evaluation of the MELCs for FSL 2021. Bureau of Learning Delivery. Online training of teachers for the deaf learners on FSL 2020 BLD-I. SID, regional trainings, various on FSL 2022, 
Policy Guideline and Implementation of FSL in Basic Education, October 2022. Bureau of Ed Evaluation and Assessment. National Meeting on Roadmap to Multiliteracy for Filipino Deaf Learners, 2018. National Council for Children's Television, Engagement with Deaf Organizations for Translation of Children's Programs to FSL, Production of Accessible TV Programming. Notably, the above are pioneering activities. A common feature has been the opening up of the Deaf Ed to Deaf organizations. Deaf individuals, including Deaf teachers and other FSL advocates and stakeholders, by no means are this perfect or 100% satisfactorily. However, it cannot be denied that these activities in the last two years are milestones in Deaf Ed as an agency and in the entire education of Filipino Deaf learners. Yet this situation appears to reflect the disjointed coordination among bureaus and a further disconnect of these bureaus with the overall agency administration. Recommendations. Issue an agency policy that unifies and coordinates PAPs on FSL. Ensure deaf participation by institutionalizing partnership with deaf organizations, hiring a, a knowledgeable FFS, FSL experts to guide policy and implementation. Such a policy shall ensure that the complex needs of deaf learners for multilingual education are addressed fully and effectively. Six, this network is in full solidar solidarity with all other L1 advocates and supporting supporters in opposing the suspension of the MTB MLE program. This solidarity comes from the linguistic cultural Sir dimension Kian. of the deaf identity um, with FSL shares with all other L1s. Dr. Casanova? Okay. Uh, that, that's so the, the last part. In the interest. Yes. Uh, we, we, uh, I will urge everybody to, kasi alam niyo maraming gusto magsalita ano, tungkol dito sa bagay na ito. Sa akin, bibigyan niyo lang briefly yung ano, then you can submit. Okay. And binabasa naman namin lahat. Eh. Okay. Katulad yung sa, uh, sa sign language, I think we are very clear. We are all, we are all, uh, we want to, uh, we, we want to promote the sign language. So, okay. you know, uh, what I think issue dyan eh. Um, uh, again, ano, so with that, uh, Honorable Franz, you wanted to say something. Wait, what about Commission on Week on Filipino? Briefly. So, yun na lang, uh, Mr. Chair, no? So, in the, in the interest of time, dahil meron namang okay. position paper yes. submitted okay. to us, baka briefly na lang yung position noong um, commission about the suspension of the, ano no? Ito, itong okay. dalawang. Briefly, uh, uh, bilang, bilang buod po ng position ng Commission on Week on Filipino. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ang, ang, ang ano po, ang uh, posisyon ng KWF ay uh, pinapahayag ng komisyon sa wikang Pilipino ang pagsuporta nito sa pagpapatuloy ng implementasyon ng MTB MLE, hindi lamang sa estratehikong lokasyon kundi sa lahat ng panig ng kapuluan. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, pero meron pong uh, rekomendasyon na ipag-ibayuhin ipag ang implementasyon ng MTBLE lalo't pinatutunayan ng maraming pag-aaral na mabisa ang paggamit ng wika ang uh, mga katutubong wika sa K2 hanggang grade 3. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Nais ko lang po iparating na ito na nga po yan. Okay. Uh, Magalang na inirekomenda ng KWF ay paigtingin ang evaluasyon sa implementasyon ng programang MTB MLE upang makita mga bagay na dapat paunlarin. Suriing mabuti kung saan nagkakaroon ng problema sa implementasyon upang matugunan ang mga ito. Magkaroon ng enhancement sa paglinang sa kasanayan ng mga gurong nagtuturo ng mother tongue. Mr. Gawin, Chair, gawin ding bahagi ng pagpatagalang. Alam mo, ano eh, we have been very patient eh. Uh, ang, 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 ano lang, we, we understand what you're saying kasi you've, you've, uh, ang gusto lang namin, in summary, do you support the bills in the DepEd or, or hindi? Yun lang naman eh. If you do not, whether you do or you do not, just submit para makonsider ng committee. So do you support? Uh, 
Uh, Hello, dito, yes or no? Yan lang naman. Uh, hindi po. At uh, yes. isusumiti po namin ito sa inyo. Yes, thank you. Marami po salamat. Salamat, Dr. Casanova. May, uh, may I also now ask uh, first the Si Mr. Casanova. Yes, uh, of course. Member Yung mga binanggit nyo kaninang mga MSL, mga ilang uh, mga mga kababayan natin na na debt uh, ngayon sa Pilipinas. Um, wala po kung uh, uh, dato sa kasalukuyan ang nakakabatid po niyan ay si Dr. Martinez. Pwede po na nating malaman ba 'yan kung ilan po para makita natin yung isusumite po namin ang inyo, ang kasagutan ng inyong katanungan. Kung pwede pong i-break down din uh, Mr. Chair by by region, by province kung meron po tayong datos dito. Apa. Saka yung level ng kanilang uh, uh, yung kanilang sitwasyon ano okay. po. I ipagbibigay alam po namin kay Dr. Martinez ang bagay na yan at uh, sasagutin po sa lalong madaling panahon. Maraming po salamat. Yung pong uh, Mr. Chair, yung pong department niyo under DepEd din yan. NCCA po. Opo. So under uh, ano po yan? Under uh, DepEd. <laughs> NCCA is a attach agency kumbaga at at hindi rin po hindi rin NCCA po is uh, uh the yung kanyang you know KWF forms part of is part of NCCA kaya nga hindi ba sila attach agency ng uh, DepEd hindi po hindi. Hmm. Eh, pa, pag pag dinidiscuss natin ang budget ng DepEd kasama sila eh Diba? Uh, but for purposes of ano, uh, for purposes po uh, of your question, hiwalay po talaga ang MCC. Hiwalay, hiwalay po sila. Uh, ah, okay, so uh, yan, I'm, I'm clarified now. Yeah. Sige. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much po. Um, nice ko lang po ipatid sa inyo na kung ano man mo ang magiging pasya ng committee na ito, hinggil po dito sa MTBMLE, ay gagalang po ng Komisyon sa Wikang Pilipino at kami po ay... Uh, isang daang kusyentong makikiisa sa kung anong pan ang pagpapasyahan, mapagpasyahan. Yeah. Marami po salamat. Thank you, Dr. Casanova. But isa, again, isa, with respect isa. to the question, we have here, ano eh, kasama po natin ang uh, Filipino Sign Language Network, si Dr. Lisa Martinez. So maybe, you do you want us to, do you want her to respond to your question? Yes, uh, including those who are currently in school. Hindi yes. lamang po yung uh, nasa labas ng paralan, kundi yung, yung mismong nag-aaral ngayon. Doctor, so, pong malaman, uh, Dr. Lisa Martinez, are you still with us? If you're still with us, there were queries raised by the Honorable Mark Go. Are you in a position? Do you have the data to respond to those queries? Dr. Martinez? Uh, magandang umaga po. Yes, you are recognized, Dr. Martinez. Please proceed. There were queries earlier uh, addressed uh, to the KWF, and the KWF said that they will forward those queries to you. So are you in a position? Do you have the data to respond to the earlier queries by the Honorable Go? Ang masasabi po lang namin, bukol doon sa katanungan ni Congressista Go, ay nahuhuli po ang pabansang demographics ayon sa Philippine Statistics Authority dahil po kinakalap ang datos ayon sa census na sa ngayon ay kung di ako nagkakamali ay magit isang dekada na. Ayon naman sa pambansang karanasan ng WHO sa kahit anumang populasyon ay tinatayang 10 hanggang 15% ng kahit anong populasyon ay may kapansanan. Pero lahat po ito may iba't ibang kapansanan. Sa amin, sa, sa mga NGO, sa mga deaf people's organizations, tinataya po namin na doon sa 10% na may kapansanan sa isang, halimbawa, sa Pilipinas, ikap-10% doon ay malamang tinatawag namin deaf. Ang kahirapan po sa demographics na nakokolekta ang datos ng PSA Nagahalo po yung enumerators noong may mga kahirapan na sa pandinig ng mga seniors. Ang focus po ng inilalabi ng deaf community sa ngayon ay yung mga maagang nawalan ng pandinig. So iba po ito dahil yung mga seniors ay hindi po nagsisenyas. 
Ang isa pang uh, pinagmumulan ng Datos rin ay ang ating DepEd na sa nakaraang taon po dahil lagi kami nakikipag-ugnayan dahil dito ang basihan ng pagbibigay ng servisyong edukasyon mula sa DepEd. Uh, mahigit kumulang, uh, hindi ko na masyado updated, makaalam po ng ating mga opisyalis ng DepEd. Pero nung mga walo hanggang sampung taon ng nakaraan, mga dalawang daan po uh, ang tinatayang deaf na learners, mga nagsisenyas po ito. So, sa kabuuan, medyo mahina po ang datos uh, at tama kayo talagang maganda pong pagbabasihan yan. Uh, gusto ko, binanggit ko po sa chat box na isa po sa mga gawain ito na gustong harapin ng FSL unit ng Komisyon sa Wikang Filipino na magkaroon po ng pambansang rehistro ng mga nagsisenyas na tama lang po naman para maibigay natin halimbawa ang servisyo ng interpreting eh ilan nga ba ang mga ngailangan nitong servisyo nito so uh, work in progress po at mahirap at matagal na po namin gustong makipag-ugnayan sa Philippine Statistics Authority pati rin sa DOH at uh, medyo controversial po yung pagkakalap ng dato so Hanggang doon lang po ang maari naming maibahagi sa inyo mula sa aming tindig bilang mga civil society organizations. Gusto rin po namin makita na magkaroon tayo ng opisyal na mga datos ukol sa ilan nga ba ang deaf at ilan dito ay mga bata, ilan dito ang nagsisenyas dahil marami po ang hindi nakakaabot sa ating pangpublikong sistema ng mga paaralan. Nung nakaraan, uh, ayon po sa aming mga datos na kasama namin ng Social Watch Philippines. Martinez, could you wind up? I think we get the point that the uh, question was kung may datos o wala. We get the point, walang datos. And I think uh, members have uh, heard uh, w- the statement already. So I think uh, we will also be pushing uh, the DepEd and, and the PSA to be able to assist us on this matter. Opa, dalawa sa tatlong porsyento lamang ng mga batang may kapansanan ang nakakaabot sa pampublikong paaralan. Salamat po. So with that, uh, the next, uh, could we call on some of the guests who have already signified an intention to say, uh, say something? But kung pwede, briefly lang po. No? And then you can submit your position papers. Uh, in my list, we have Dep Ed Carr, Dr. Estela Carino. Are you still with us? Dr. Carino, are you still with us? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, good afternoon po and to the other members of the committee. Um, as regards the two uh, house bill, uh, I am uh, the regional director of Dep Edcar and Dep Edcar has uh, nine, uh, eight SDOs uh, consisting of uh, different learners of different languages. And when I uh, was assigned as the regional director of CAR as well as an SDS, I have seen the different resor- uh, resource materials in Iloco, which was uh, declared as the regional uh, language of uh, CAR. And it was not used. No Teachers keep on tra- translating because the languages in one grade level are of uh, different types. And so I support the suspension first of the implementation of the mother tongue until we shall uh, uh we all the materials you no know, needed in the different subject areas translated or done in the different uh, languages in all grade levels shall be done because what's happening mr chair is they may teach in the in the language if they know it but when they make test it should, it will be in english or in filipino and i have seen resource materials in iloco which were not opened up to this time because that is not the language spoken in the different schools so uh in br- briefly mr chair i do uh support again the suspension for further learning and preparation of materials thank you mr Thank you, Dr. Carino. Again, the next one is brief, lang po, no? but we will call everyone again. We, we just want brief reply, uh, uh, your brief statements. Dep Ed Car, Dr. Soraya Kapulo, Schools Division Superintendent Ifugao. Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and the members of the body. Uh, we fully support the House bill authored by Representative Mark Go for the reason that the current mother tongue of the learners is different from the assigned uh, mother tongue that was mentioned by uh, RDS Stella Carino. I was 
was assistant superintendent of Baguio City and I saw how the implementation of mother tongue was. In March 2021, together with the University of the Philippines Cordillera Studies Center, uh, there was a conduct of language mapping with the uh, grade one learners. And uh, it was to determine the language spoken and the language understood by grade one pupils in the five uh, districts in Baguio City. And it came out that uh, Filipino is the dominant language spoken and understood by the 558,000 grade one learners. And if we focus on what, just one district, which has the highest number of grade one learners, that's Baguio Central District, the language spoken by half of the learners or 45% of the learners don't speak Ilocano, which was the assigned mother tongue or is the assigned mother tongue. They speak Filipino and English. And uh, Mr. Chair, in terms of the language understood, 28% or 266 of the learners do not understand Ilocano. So in short, Mr. Chair and the members, we fully support the House bill authored by Representative Marco. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Saraya Fakulo. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, PIDS, uh, Dr. Aniseto Orbeta is present. I think they had a study. Um, um, PIDS had a study, if I'm correct. So is, is, are they still with us? Uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 Representative Romulo, yes. Uh, we... Briefly, uh, briefly, yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for looking uh, cognizance of our study. And uh, I think the study was very clear about the uh, implementation issues and conceptual issues. But our bottom line is that uh, uh, that rather than uh, uh, we addressed uh, the study is proposing not really to suspend the uh, the implementation, but actually to address the implementation issues and learn as we go. We see no conflict between the implementing MTBLE in the early grades and proficiency uh, in the second language, such as Filipino or English. Uh, if you want proficiency in Filipino and English, teaching this bet, uh, better at the uh, after the primary grades or after the child has been learned the fundamentals of content of language of this expression and thinking upon entering school is the solution. Uh, 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 is the solution not the suspension of NTBLE? I think that's that's the bottom line of our statement. That we will issue. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Beta, just to clarify, I read your study. Based on your study, napakaraming challenges. Yes. So, what I'm telling this committee is that bahala na yung mga studenting hindi naman nakakaintindi dahil hindi tama yung implementation. You're saying let's continue. Uh, though nagsa suffer yung ibang estudyante because that's the bottom line. Your own study said that there are challenges. In fact, you mentioned that uh, very uh, expressly in, in several portions of your uh, of your study na una, sinabi ninyo na yung yung isang challenge yan, hindi lahat ng students in a particular school uh pare-pareho sila nung uh, mother tongue na sinasalita. Pero isang mother tongue lang ang pinapa-implement doon. So, kawawa lang yung mga hindi pareho yung mother tongue. Secondly, sinabi po ninyo na sa study rin ninyo that uh, one challenge is also the upskilling of our teachers. So, you are saying that uh, uh, at the same time, while they are not yet too familiar with the mother tongue that they are required to teach, they should continue. And that won't that be detrimental to the students, the learning of the students? Uh, again po, no, we just, uh, parang ano eh, Parang hindi uh, yung statement po ninyo, uh, hindi tugma eh. Uh, so sinasabi po ng study ninyo about the challenges. Based on your uh, based on your on your own study, meron pa nga po kayong statement doon na there are certain places that English po yung uh, parang salita talaga doon sa lugar na yon. Pero hindi yun yung tinuturo doon. So anong ibig natin sabihin based on your initial statement here? Sinasabi ninyo na pagpatuloy natin ito, kahit na itong challenges na ito ay pwedeng maka-apekto dun sa learning ng mga estudyante. Uh, is that uh, correct? Uh, uh, yung, 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 ang ano po namin is yung there's problems about the identification of, ano, of the what should be taught as a, manner, as, as a medium of instruction. Uh, uh, sa palagay po namin, yung dialectal difference uh, 
is much lesser than uh, introducing like Filipino in a non-Tagalog uh, speaking area uh, as, as a medium of instruction or English for that matter. So that, that's, that's what we are, what we, we are uh, saying that, uh, uh, yes, there are dialectal difference, but that would be a smaller problem compared to, let's say, teaching uh, Filipino in a non-Tagalog speaking area, for instance. I, I have no problems if the, if the language mapping is uh, saying that the Filipino, katulad na sinasabi nung kanina sa superintendent na Baguio, na, na Filipino ang, gina, ang kanilang salita, iyon po yung ituturo. Iyon po yung naman ang bottom line na sinasabi po namin. Uh, at saka, ang isa po po namin, ina, the objection about the teachers is that because the teachers were trained to teach po in English. And even we admire teachers who can speak in English as good teachers. Yung po yung nature ng Philippine education eh. So, uh, if you ask them to teach in, in mother tongue na hindi sila trained doon, simply may hihirapan. Sila po yung, po yung nakikita namin objection. That's why the, the training itself of the teachers has to be, has to be, has to be uh, addressed as well. Besides, of course, that what you already, what you already mentioned. But... Yes, Dr. Rebeta. Yun nga ang point eh. Sinabi ninyo, Kailangan ng language mapping. Meron na ba? Meron uh, ba alam na language mapping na sa bawat paaralan uh, ng Pilipinas? Meron na ba? Uh, meron po yung dito. Yung, actually, ang DPED has asked the primary grades about the, what's the language of being. Actually, we used it. What's the language being spoken in your in in your in your home? So may de, may datos po yun na na ang ang depend. Tinatanong po yung mga estudyante kung ano yung language na ginagamit sa bahay. Three, first two languages, I think. See, that, that, that's it. Or are you passing that on to DepEd na meron na sila? Hindi naman po kayo. Mer uh, 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 na, 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 na share po sa amin yung datos doon. Ginamit po namin actually yun to to to, to tell the that the the, the uh, to, to say this the the statement that there are a lot of language differences in schools for instance. That's that's the basis of our, our statement. Correct. Chair, may language differences nga. Yun nga ang lumabas doon eh. But you're telling us na tuloy-tuloy muna natin to kahit na may language uh, differences Yun ang, yun ang point po ninyo. Tuloy-tuloy natin to. Sinabi nyo rin ngayon lang na ang medyo, ang pagturo sa mga teachers was done in, in English. So yun ang nakasanayan nila. So dapat may adjustments pa sila para makapagturo sa mother tongue. That's why hindi pa perfect yun. So habang hindi pa perfect, ang point po ninyo as PIDS, tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yan kahit hindi perfect. Huwag natin suspect. Huh? Kayo na nagsabi. Kasi uh, yun ang, yun ang uh, conclusion ninyo. Is that correct? Uh, kasi po naniniwala kami na, na yung, ano, yung uh, the accessibility of, 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 uh, of greater uh, understanding of material is better if you are taught in the language and of expression and thinking of the child. Yun po yung paniwala namin. That's uh, what, we, what you said in the study is that uh, it is based on that pedagogical foundation na uh, dapat yung bata tuturuan ng content in his in the language and of his expression and, and, and thinking rather than tuturuan mo pa siya ng uh, uh, in, in material at saka mag-aaral pa siya ng language na hindi naman yun ang uh, sinasalita niya. Yun yung po yung basis po of that of that recommendation. Na, so yes, there are problems but we should address the problems rather than uh, uh, go go back to the to the to the bilingual uh, which we have been doing uh, ever since at at well, saka I, yun po yung aking uh, sasabihin salamat po that's that ano that hindi prepared yung implementation pero continue again yes. uh, i hope you understand what you're saying uh, chairman mark yeah i i think uh, yun nga ang ano kanina nabanggit ni dr orbeta uh, ituloy yung uh, implementation ng mother tongue even uh, maraming problema and the problem is how to address yung issue of implementation. Precisely, that's why we want it suspended because of the problems of implementation. Karamihan po ng mga guru on the ground na nagtuturo ay hirap na hirap sila. Can you imagine in our city, they have even to teach in the regular mother tongue pero pagbigay ng exam, Eh, si English o Pilipino ang ginagawa. 
So there is really a problem as far as implementation. The people who are supposed to teach are not prepared. At hindi lang po yan, yung mga materials na ginagamit ay hindi talaga ayon dun sa prinsipyo na kailangan mother tongue ang gamitin. So ito po yung problema kaya natin sususpindi. 19 lang ang mother tongue dialects na gagamitin sa buong bansa pero ilang pong mga lingway meron tayo. Kulang-kulang sa isang daan, more or less 100, hindi po ba? And because of this, nagkakaproblema. Lalo na ngayong uh, pandemya, lalong nakita, very blatant yung nakita natin problema. So having said this, hindi po kaya maganda talaga. Suspindi natin at uh, pag-aralan itong uh, ba mga bagay na ito at i-address natin kung kailangan at pag uh, na clear na tayo kung ano yung mga problema, ma-address na natin, then we implement or even totally uh, abolish it. Uh, you know? Yun po yung suggestion namin dito sa mga panukalang batas namin dito. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chairman Go. But uh, I, I, I suppose that was already uh, answered earlier. Do you, do you still want a response? No more, yes. Uh, let's now... Uh, thank, thank you po. Let's now proceed. Uh, salamat, uh, Sa, salamat sa PIDS, Dr. Aniseto Orbeta. Uh, let's also give the chance to, the, ang dami pa ho natin pwedeng tawagan. Ano? Uh, Save the Children Philippines, Attorney Emma. Are you still with us? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to call on my colleague, uh, Joy Sampang, our advisor on education, to relay the uh, Proposal of Save the Children. Yes. Uh, Ma'am Joyce, you will be representing Save the Children. Briefly lang po, then submit your position paper. Ma'am Joyce? Tama ba? Ma'am Joy or Joyce? Joy. Yes, good morning, um, Mr. Chair. I'm Joy Sampang, the Early Childhood Care and Development Advisor of Save the Children Philippines. Well, Save the Children fully supports the continuation of the implementation of mother tongue-based multilingual education program. Um, for us, it is based on many strong longitudinal international and local studies that highlight the benefits of using mother tongue as the language of instruction. So children not only learn and perform better academically, but also give in additional languages more easily. So from our experience no, uh, in our project for grades 1 to 3 implemented in South Central Mindanao from 2012 to 2015, uh, we saw a large improvement no, no, sa school's average participation rate. So this is not just on the cognitive level, no, but it in po sa attendance or sa average participation rate. So from 65.59 prior to the implementation ng MTBLE ng project in 2012, um, nagkaroon po ng increase to 86.10% at the end of the project. So we also saw long through the longitudinal study, you know, tracking yung children's re reading performance, that there are um, positive differences. So may increase on 35% uh, for the Hiligay non. And then for Mandin uh, Magindanawan, 65%. Tivoli, 39%. So these are sampled grade 3 pupils you know, that exhibited reading abilities and competencies in the mother tongue. Um, so... So Save the Children deems that suspending the MTB MLE program undermines the evidence and benefits of learning in mother tongue language and substantial gains made so far. So um, kahit po na meron na tayong 19 official um, mother tongue languages to date, so it allows really the program to reach most learners in the country and reflecting its commitment not to reaching minority groups and recognizing that many schools are dealing with diverse multilingual learners and their language may not be included in any of the 19 languages. There's a policy already no, that um, DepEd has issued in 2019. So that is DepEd Order 21. Um, so here's in 2019, it allows enough flexibility in partnership with the communities. So it really takes a village to raise a child. So hindi lang po mga teachers and yung mga kaguruan at sa atin sa DepEd, no? it includes the uh, whole of community approach. So it involves NGOs and then the community. So um, Save the Children calls for the continued implementation of the MTBMLE program. We would like to ensure genuine inclusion through language in 
instruction. And after all, inclusion is the core principle of MTBMLE. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Please submit na lang your, ano, and including uh, the studies you made. Uh, although I think we've seen that, but please just submit it na rin. Center for uh, Languages, uh, Mr. Tejano. Wala na, wala na si Mr. Leonardo Tejano. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I hope I can be heard. Yes, briefly lang po, no? Uh, then submit your position paper. Yes, we. I already submitted the, the position paper of the Center for Ilocan Amyanan Studies of the Mariano Marcos State University. And again, we are strongly opposing the suspension of the implementation of NTBMLE. Our reasons and also um, the researches that we conducted, we will be submitting to the committee secretary. But here are our suggestions. We, we are urging the committee to really, or instead of suspending, but to support the implementation or assist the implementation of NTBMLE. Particularly, number one, we ask the committee to strictly adhere to domain, domain one, content knowledge and pedagogy strand one of the PPSD or the Philippine Professional Centers for Teachers. There, nakalagay po doon na tayo ay mag ng teachers na merong competency sa mother tongue, sa Filipino, at saka sa English. Pero hindi po yun nakikita in the hiring and also in the training of teachers. We also encourage institutions that train to train teachers to include NTBMLE also in their different um, courses and also set up set up programs for NTBMLE. In our in our um, university, we are training teachers, particularly for NTBMLE. Um, we call that Master of Arts in Education major in Ilocano Studies. So we we developed that program particularly for MTBMLE. That is why if you will be looking into the researches that we conducted here in MMSU in our um in our laboratory schools, our children are proficient in the mother tongue in Filipino and English, and they can also they also have the ability to have other languages. Number three, acknowledge, support, and fund existing community efforts towards MTBMLE. Number four, provide competent research and scholarship grants to MTBMLE and spearhead targeted MTBMLE training programs. Nakikita namin na ang hindi, na, ang hindi napapansin ay yung actual strategies towards, for example, MTBMLE towards the development of sciences, of mathematics, of English and other languages, so we can we can clear the la or clear our path towards this. And also number five, we recognize the diversity of languages in the Philippines. That is why we are also encouraging LGUs to take part in making an MTBMLE framework, particularly sa um, language situation ng isang lugar. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tan. Mr. Tahano, just uh, a quick uh, question. Ano? Sa, uh, sa nasasakupan po ninyo, ilan yung, uh, may, ilan yung dialects? Um, Ilocano has many dialects, uh, Mr. Chair. However, in Ilocos Norte, we have different languages. We have many different mother tongues to include also the mother tongues of our indigenous peoples here in Ilocos Norte. And yung we, indigenous uh, cultures po ninyo, Pag tinuturo niyo yung mother tongue ninyo na Ilocano, naintindi, hindi nila naintindihan yun? No, Mr. Chair, we are teaching the mat, we are teaching through their mother tongue. So if their mother tongue is itneg, we are using itneg. Yes, ang sinasabi mo sa inyo, may isang major Ilocano. Yung mga hindi, hindi kasama dun sa major dialect, binibigyan niyo ng separate classroom. Is that correct? They um they are under the iPad, Mr. Chair. So yes, yes. meron po silang nasa ibang school po sila. Separate yung mother tongue nila. Is that yes, correct? Tama. We also, yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so so klaro tayo na may dominant kayo. Yung sa inyo kasi may dominant Ilocano. Eh, yun ang major. Yung mga hindi marunong ng mother tongue na dominant, meron kayong ibang classroom doon tinuturo yung mother tongue nila. Yun basically yun. Yes, Mr. Chair. Because thank, that thank you, Mr. Tano. We we understand. And I think that is the correct in, that is the 
correct way to implement it. If that is the way it was being implemented all over, wala tayong problema. In your case, maganda tama implementation po ninyo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tejano. Professor Nolasco, uh, can we call on Professor Nolasco? Hello. Yes. Uh, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Uh, hindi ko nababasahin yung position paper ng 170 plus talaytayan, pero gusto ko lang mag-react dun sa mga points na na-raise na, ng, ng mga tao dyan sa inyong hearing. Number Briefly one, po. Briefly yung lang. sabi pong 19 languages lang ang covered, uh, totoong 19 languages yan, pero ang hindi po na-appreciate, ang hindi po na-appreciate ay the fact na those 19 languages already cover 95% of the learners. Yun po ang hindi nakikita. Ikalawa po, tungkol sa language diversity. Meron pong kasabihan yung mga linguists, yung mountains divide and seas unite. Ang ibig pong sabihin nito, mas maraming diversity sa kamundukan kaysa dun sa diversity dun sa mga uh, seaborne communities. Kaya yung, yung sinasabi pong diversity lang, lalong-lalo na dun sa uh, Cordillera ay natural lang po na magkaroon ng iba't ibang mga wika dahil bulubundukin po yung lugar. Ang pangatlo, ito po ang last point. Tandaan po natin, ang definition ng mother tongue ay at L1 ay iba po dun sa karaniwang alam ng mga kongresista at maraming opisyal ng gobyerno. Sa ilalim po ng, ng 10533, apat po yung definition ng mother tongue. It is the language you grew up with it is the language you identify with. It is the language you know best. And it is the language you use most. Sa makatwid, apat po yung definition. Ito po ang UNESCO definition. Bakit po importante ito? Kasi ang sinasabi po ng mga iba ay bakit ginagamit yung Ilocano, samantalang Tagalog at English ang alam ng mga bata. Ang sagot po dyan, kung, kung ang kagalingan ng mga bata ay nasa Filipino o English or Kankanae o mas kaya nung wika, yung po ang kanilang mother tongue. Sa so, makatwid, pwedeng posible na yung English ang mother tongue mo o yung Filipino mo, especially dun sa mga Cordilleran areas. Ngayon, bakit ko nababanggit ito? Ayon po sa PISA, lahat ng mga international test, ipinapakita po na 6% lamang ng mga test takers ang gumagamit ng English sa bahay. At 94% ng mga test takers ang hindi gumagamit ng Ingles sa bahay. Ngayon, bakit importante itong fact na ito? Kasi na-compute po nila yung mga scores ng mga bata na nag i sa bahay at yung mga bata na hindi nag i sa bahay at lumalabas po napakalaki ng agwat ng scores ng mga batang hindi nag i sa bahay kumpara doon sa mga nag i sa bahay. Sa makatwid, kailangan pong pag-aralan natin ng maigi kung bakit yung mga nag i sa bahay na tumanggap ng test sa English ay habak na mas mababa ang mga score kumpara doon po sa hindi nag i sa bahay. Uh, Maraming salamat po at nabigyan po ako ng pagkakataon na maipaliwanag ang mga bagay na ito. Dr. Nolasco, 
uh, we will confirm yung basis sinasabi po ninyo no? uh, parang wala ako nakita na ganong uh, na ganong pag paghinimay po natin yung mga international assessment examinations na yung nagsa, nag nagsasalita ng uh, wikang English sa bahay ay sila pa yung mababa sa parang hindi naman ata uh, uh, again ano we will ask DepEd to provide us this information Hi, uh, sir oh, sir oh, Roman no oh, uh, nag-usap oh, na tayo ng matagal hindi po namin nabanggit yon kasi tinignan po namin historically hindi ho doctor historical at lumi- lumalabas kahit yung Can you cut him na lang? Uh, ayaw niya mi, 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 Mr. Ayaw Chair? Mong ano eh, ayaw mong pumayag, ma- ayaw mong makinig, Dr. Nolasco eh. Mr. Chair, yung, yes. yung historical na sinasabi niya, minsan pa lang naman tayo sumama sa PISA exam. Yes eh. Ah, ang point is, we, well, we, we asked the Department about... of Education para doon sa nahimay. Dr. Nolasco, uh, you know, we have no problem uh, listening to you, pero you also have to listen to us. Huwag, huwag, huwag naman habang nagsasalita kami, ay bilang uh, ikakat mo kami. Hindi naman po tama yan. Uh, ang sinasabi ko lang po, hihingi namin sa Department of Education yung sinasabi po ninyo na yung datos na sinasabi po ninyo na itong international assessment na ito, yung managsasalita ng English sa bahay ay sila pa yung mababa dun sa PISA examination. Hindi ba yun yung sinabi ninyo, Dr. Nolasco? Hindi historical. Ang pinag-uusapan natin itong huling PISA examination. Hindi ba, could we listen to Dr. Nolasco, okay lang po ba? magrespetuhan tayo. Mahabang nagsasalita kami, makikinig ka, mag, pag, ikaw naman, makikinig rin kami. So, yun lang ang sinasabi ko. Tama po ba yung uh, uh, intindi ko sa inyo na meron kayong sinasabi na may datos na sinasabi na dito sa recent PISA examination, yung mga nagsasalita ng English sa bahay, sila pa yung mababa dito sa uh, international assessment test. Tama po ba yung intindi ko o mali yung intindi ko? Sir Chair, baka pwedeng pag-submitting natin sila, no? si Dr. Nolasco, nung no? sinasabi niyang study, yes. historical na. Ano. Yes, Dr. Nolasco, we will also ask you to submit yung historical. Ano, pero tama ba yung intindi ko? Ang sinasabi ko po, yung historical, kasi yung PISA, ngayon lang po tayo sumali. Ang sinasabi ko po, yung trends in international math and science study. At ito po, ginagamit namin na batayan kasi nakita po natin namin historically, kahit na dun sa 2008 advanced math, eh, itinataya ko na po kasi matagal na po natin namin na pag-aralan po ito. At naipapakita nito kahit na dun sa, sa Philippine Science High School students, kumuha po sila ng advanced math noong 2008. At ang lumalabas doon, totoo, na lahat sila mataas sa 50%. Ibig sabihin, mataas po yung scores nila. Pero kahit dun sa mga mataas yung mga scores na Philippine Science High School students, yung mga nag-iingles sa bahay ay hamak na mas mababa ang score kaysa dun sa hindi nag-iingles sa bahay. Okay. Salamat, Dr. Nalasco. Yung sunod na po natin natatawagin ay siguro... Mahaba pa. Mr. Chair, just make a comment. Ano? Yes, uh, Chair Go. Yung mga people who are on the ground doing the implementation of this mother tongue, sila ang talagang nahihirapan dito. And they're the people objecting. Pero yung mga nasa Institute of Languages, yung mga centers who are there uh, in the offices, are the ones in favor. Pero yung mga people on the ground, Nakausap natin, nakausap ng mga grupo natin, ay silang nag-object eh, kasi nakikita nila yung napakahirap, yung there's so many challenges in terms of implementation. They are not prepared. They 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 don't have the support, uh, if you may, to implement this particular program. So, like, uh, hindi yung dahil malayo ka eh, sa amin, ba, sa Baguio, multicultural kami dun eh. Iba-ibang lingwa eh. Uh, paano mo implement ang, uh, paano, kahit na yung, yung Ilocano, uh, yun ang ginagamit uh, generally doon. But there are so many people with different uh, uh, dialects, no? Uh, so, paano yon? Siguro sa isang community na homogenous, 
uh, isolated probably where there is a common language uh, spoken by by people okay yun eh but in in so many areas in the country at saka probably it's high time that we unif you, we unify this country by having one language uh, it can be filipino or english eh kasi nagiging ano pa eh nagiging divisive to a certain degree uh, yung ganun uh, so i think it's important that uh, we relook uh, uh, this particular uh, mother tongue that's why my recommendation is uh, we suspend this and uh, we we let the ad ed come to study review and recommend uh, whatever action that should be taken to address this uh, concern mr chair thank you Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Go. The next one is Dr. Gregorio Del Pilar, uh, UP uh, Personality Individ Individual Differences Laboratory. Tama po ba, Dr. Del Pilar? Uh, yes. Tama, tama po. Uh, tama po, Congressman Romulo. Ako rin po ay uh, dating Pangulo ng National Research Council of the Philippines hanggang ditong Marso 2022. At ako po ang convener ng MTBMLE Discussion Group ng uh, NRCP. Um, ako po ay uh, isa dun sa mga natuwa noong uh, noong uh, dun sa 2013 act ay isinama yung MTBMLE ano po uh, dahil po ito ay umaayon sa pananaliksik na nakikita natin sa maraming bahagi ng mundo. Uh, ako po gusto ko rin pong sabihin na napakagandang idea po yung uh, natatalakay nito sa EDCOM 2 no dahil magkakaroon tayo ng sapat na panahon para mahinahon natin na matingnan yung mga resulta ng pananaliksik. Kinikilala po ng marami uh, kasama na po kayo yung mga problema na kinakaharap ng NTBMLE no. Um subalit ta uh, yung pong materials, yung pong mga kahandaan ng mga mga guro. Kinikilala po natin 'yan. Pero ang wag po nating kalimutan sana kasi ang tinitingnan natin na alternatibo pag sinuspindi natin 'yon babalik tayo sa bilingual education. Wag po nating kalimutan yung malaking problema sa bilingual education ano po. Ako po ay nagsulat ay naggumawa ng pag-aaral no review uh, review study ng mga pag-aaral na ginawa tungkol sa pinaghahambing ang bisa ng Pilipino at Ingles. Oo, Ingles kontra sa mga wikang Pilipino, no? Hiligay noon, Pilipino at Filipino. At lumalabas po rito yung napakalaking problema natin sa Ingles mula pa noon. Magbibigay lang po ako ng tatlong halimbawa. 1925, Monroe Commission, alam siguro ng marami sa atin dito, panahon pa po ito ng mga Amerikano, natuklasan nila na sa kakayahan sa pagbabasa ang mga high school, fourth year high school students noong panahang yon katumbas ng grade 5 sa Amerika. 1974, Words in Science Philippines ginawa ng UP Science Education Center. Pinag-aralan at yung pong uh, Monroe Commission, 32,000 po sa buong bansa. 24 na probinsya, malaking sample po. Words in Science Philippines ng Science Education Center ng UP, 1974, 42,000 ang pinag-aralan sa buong bansa rin. Ano ang pinag-aralan nila? Uh, mga ginagamit sa non, ito po ay non-technical terms used in science education tulad ho ng across, under, beyond, diagonal, non-technical terms po. Nag-aral po sila ng mga 700 terms na ginagamit sa sa pagtuturo ng agham. Nakita nila na 52% lang po sa Luzon, 48% sa Kabisayaan at uh, 50% sa Mindanao ang naiintindihan ng mga fourth year high school students. Kalahati lang po. Words in elementary science, ito po yung pangatlong pag-aaral. Science Education Center din 19 1980s po ito. Ang kanilang finding, mga 300, malaking sample, mga 29,000 po ito. Nag-aral po sila ng mahigit 300 non-technical terms. Ganun din po, ano, parang equivalent sa elementary school. Ang finding nila, sa private schools, 78% ang naiintindihan. Sa public schools, 
49% lang po ang naiintindihan. So, ito po ang ito po ang binibigay nating kahandaan o ito ang naibigay na kahandaan na kasangkapan ng mga estudyante natin sa pag-aaral ng agham sa Ingles. Kalahati lang po ang kanilang naiintindihan. So, uh, kung babalik po tayo sa ganung sistema, alam naman po natin kung uh, yung mas recent findings tungkol sa ating kakayahan sa Ingles. Ano? Ilan, mula pa po, uh, 1920s pa po tayo nagsusumikap para paghusayin yung ating kakayahan sa Ingles. E, nakikita po natin na hindi po tayo at uh, yung pong uh, pananaliksik, sinasabi po sa atin kung bakit. On the other hand, may problema tayo sa MPB, MLE, pero mga wikang Pilipino po ito. Ibig sabihin, alam po natin na mas madaling maintindihan ang mga wikang Pilipino kahit pa iba't iba ang ating, pinag ang ating sinasalita. So ako po ay isang ayon na uh, talakayin ito ng EDCOM uh, pag-aralang mabuti ito dahil may kaugnayan din po ito sa, kwan, sa iba pang mga problema natin tulad ng mababang budget sa edukasyon. Yung pong pagbabalik sa bilingual education, Naku po, uh, maawa po tayo sa ating mga mag-aaral. Dahil po doon sa napala napakalaking problema natin sa pagtuturo ng Ingles. One century na po natin itong ginagawa. Narito po tayo ngayon. Salamat po. Uh, salamat, Dr. Del Pilar. I mean, we would appreciate na padala po ninyo sa amin yung study na sinasabi po ninyo, no? na ginawa po ninyo para mapag-aralan po natin. Pero again po, no? Uh, maawa rin po tayo sa mga estudyante ngayon na hindi rin po nila, hindi nabibigyan ng kalidad na edukasyon dahil hindi magandang implementasyon. Pangayon po ako ron. Namin ay uh, dapat magkaroon ng middle ground somewhere. Ang importante ay kalidad ng edukasyon. Na, ang tingin po ng iba sa amin ay wala yung kalidad ng edukasyon kung hindi na naitindihan dahil iba-iba yung uh, mother tongue. Iba uh, yung kapasidad rin nung hindi pa natin upskill lahat ng ating mga ng mga dapat nagtuturo ng ating mga mother tongue. Pero Dr. Del Pilar, no, uh, please submit to us yung study na sinasabi ninyo, na ginawa ninyo. Next is uh, from the ENET Philippines, Miss Olivia Lucas. Uh, uh, kasama pa ba po natin si Ma'am Lucas? Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Alvelyn Berdan. I'm from Inet Philippines. Unfortunately, Ms. Oli Lucas uh, is not able to join us today, but I can deliver the position statement of Inet Philippines. Yes, yes. Uh, please, please proceed. Okay. You will submit to us the, the actual position paper or, uh, or submitted na, and this will be parang a summary of uh, what is stated there, no? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Alva Burdan, the National Coordinator of INET Philippines, and I'll be glad to uh, read a brief of our position statement. The suspension of the implementation of the mother tongue-based multilingual education as a medium of instruction in the kindergarten to grade 3 counters the government's commitment to provide and ensure learner-centered, culture-sensitive quality and inclusive education. Uh, whatever flaws and limitation in the, in the implementation of MTB-MLE must be addressed accordingly and seriously. Its suspension will further hold back progress and gains we have achieved so far, most especially in placing inclusive education at the center of education agenda. Inet Philippines recommends to conduct a uh, first a legislative um, inquiry on how DepEd is implementing the mother tongue-based multilingual education to identify the strengths and challenges and improve its execution. Two, revisit the implementing rules and regulations of the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 to determine the gaps and ways forward. And three, maximize existing researches and conduct further study on the implementation of MTBMLE that can be used as resource knowledge management. On the implementation, INET Philippines recommends awareness raising and mobilization for MTBMLE to be an ongoing at all levels if the program is to be implemented successfully and sustained within the formal education system. Development of curriculum and instructional materials must involve local stakeholders especially local leaders and elders who have a mastery of local languages. 
Third, teacher recruitment from the local language communities and training must be supported. Fourth, monitoring and evaluation must be built into every part of MTBMLE program and use the results to strengthen and sustain it. And fifth, cooperation and support from multiple agencies, government, universities, research institutes, NGOs, and others working with language communities to plan, implement, evaluate, and support their program must be established to support strong and sustainable MTB MLE programs. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next one is Mr. Eleazardo Casilag, Federation of Association of Private Schools Administrators. Mr. Casilag or wala na? Kasama pa natin? Hindi na. Wala na. Dr. Maria Mercedes Arzadon, Movement for Safe, Equitable, Quality, and Relevant Education. Magandang umaga po, Your Honor. Salamat po sa pag-ibita sa amin. Uh, kami po sa Movement uh, for uh, Safe and Equitable uh, relevant education ay naninindigan na dapat ituloy ano, ang MTBMLE, kagaya ng nasabi ni Dr. Orbeta. Uh, ng implementation po ay we learn as we go. Sa aking pong uh, pag-aaral sa Benguet, ano, tumira ako doon ng tatlong buwan, uh, nagsimula sila sa Ilocano, pero yung isang community sa Bugyas, isang distrito to, at yung buong Benguet dist, uh, Division, unti-unti nakadevelop sila ng material sa Kankanae. Mayroon nga silang 300 story books sa Kankanae. At proud sila sa achievement ng student nila sa literacy nakakabasa. At kahit sa NAT, ano, kahit puntahan po ni uh, Director Carino ang Bugyas or uh, Benguet Division, ay dahil nagsimula ito sa Ilocano, pero nagkaroon ng Kankanae. Ngayon po sa Ipseo, sa IPE, office, meron ng kankanae as language, meron ng four minima. The same din po sa Eastern Pangasinan, uh, ito po ay Ilocano, pero may mga uh, uh, IP groups doon, ano, like sa San Nicolas, may Ibaloy. Kausap ko yung isang teacher doon. At dahil daw sa mga uh, workshops ng mga teacher sa DepEd, na isasali sila. Ngayon ay unti-unti nang dumadami ang Ibaloy uh, materials. Sana po ang taga-Baguio ay pumunta sa Sambuanga City. Ano? Kasi nung una, dahil sinusupport ng city ang Chabacano, yun ang ini-impose nila sa lahat ng barangay. Pero later on, nagkaroon sila ng formula. Ano? Na pag ang certain number ng barangay ay hindi lahat nagsa-Chabacano, pwedeng mag-Filipino. So naging differentiated ang approach. At may mga magagandang lugar din kagaya sa Aklan, ibang lugar sa Bicol where MTB Amelie is working. So I Hope that you would listen to the national focal person of MTBMLE in DepEd, Dr. Villanesa, and her team. Alam nila, no? sila po ay yung mga trainers. So Dr. Villanesa ang trainer ng National English Proficiency Program ng DepEd noon. At sila yung inasign ni Secretary Lapus na mamuno sa MTBMLE. And so they know, meron silang alam nila kung anong, saan nag-work at hindi nag-work. Sana po ay... Uh, maging uh, differentiated ng implementation or pag-suspend man, hindi sa lahat, kundi sa lugar na nag-work, sa mga IP communities, mga lugar na nabanggit ko ay ituloy ito. Mga okay. recommendation, uh, my, uh, sorry sir, last na lang po sir. Uh, sir oh, um, ituloy po yung strategic plan na ginawa noon sa MTBMLE, mag-appoint po ng EPS, Education Program Supervisor for Mother Tongue, Dahil wala, meron lang pong uh, focal person pero walang EPS. At sana po ay magkaroon ng MTBMLE Task Force. Kagaya na ginawa sa ALS. Kaya naging successful ito. So yun lama po, Your Honor. Maraming pong salamat. Ma'am Ched, uh, tama ba ang naiintindihan ko sa inyo? Ang sinasabi po ninyo, nag-enumerate kayo sa amin ng mga success stories pag inimplement implement itong uh, mother tongue. Pero sinasabi yes, niyo yes, yes, na, na hindi naging... Uh, successful pa, may challenges pa. So tama po ba ang intindi ko na ang sinasabi niyo sa amin, ang dapat natin pag-aralan, dun sa mga successful, yung implementation na using mother tongue, ituloy natin yun. Di ba? Huwag walang problema yun eh. Pero dun sa mga may challenges, dun yung tingnan natin. Is that correct? Uh, kasi po mayroong le uh, levels ng implementation. Pwedeng oral language lang. Pagaya sa... Uh, Benguet siguro, del, or I mean sa Baguio City na sinasabi ni uh, uh, Congressman Go, no? 
maybe may mga il- <laughs> nag-aral din ako sa ano ba yan uh, Latinidad ano dapat Ilocano pero nakakankana sila no so maybe oral language lang muna ang gamit sa mother tongue pero sa mga magagaling sa sipag na may teachers gumamit ng materials pwedeng printed na na mother tongue ano so may mga level level po diyan uh, well, your ma'am, honor ma'am Shadow we understand what you're saying but paano do sa mga lugar na masasabi po natin na kailangan pa natin ma-upskill yung ating mga guro. Kailangan pa magkaroon ng language mapping para masigurado na lahat ng studyante doon, yun talaga yung mother tongue na sinasalita nila. Yung mga lugar na hindi pa may challenges pa na ganun. Would you say that it would be correct to to suspend first do, there para makorekt yung mga challenges? Pero doon sa mga lugar, katulad kanina, assuming tama na yung nangyayari doon sa uh, mga ibang lugar na bin- minimension, E doon, pagpatuloy natin yung mother tongue. Pero doon sa mga lugar na may challenges, baka naman uh, unfair din sa mga estudyante sa teachers. So would it not be fair to suspend in those areas? Siguro po, kasi pag sinabi niyong suspend, tatama rin na yung teachers na gagawa ng materials. Ano? So yan <laughs> suspend yung, pala. Eh. Oo, ano? Kasi so, gusto natin na magsipag. Yes, yan yung uh, tutu. Gusto na magsipag. Oo. Pinabara na... Lahat naman nagsasalita kanina na may challenges. Okay. Ang kinakailangan nila, at ikaw lang siguro ang uh, gustong mag-voice out, pagka sinuspend kasi, ang magiging problema, hindi na matutuloy. Yan yung bottom line. Hindi, uh, hindi okay. naman po. Wala hindi na naman po. Kasi, kasi yung word na suspend, uh, recalibrate po siguro ang mas maganda kaysa suspend. Oh. Kasi may negative meaning yan. Eh. Ay, wala na palang mother tongue. So, uh, so, hindi na kami magagawa. So, yun po yung nangyayari. Si, yung, yung si Manang, uh, sabi mo, tatlong buwan ka sa Benguet. Pwede apa, ko, apa. Pwede, yung posisyon kasi ni Dr. Carino ay kakaiba sa binanggit ninyo. Siguro pwede natin bang tawagin ulit si uh, Director uh, Stella Carino kung ano ang comment niya doon sa comment ni Manang Ched. <laughs> Doctor uh, as requested by Chairman Margo, Dr. Carino, are you still with us? Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes po, Mr. Chair and uh, I have listened po to the comment and that uh, I will have to go to Bugias. Yeah. I have been there several times. I can also speak the language of the Kankanae. And I have uh, actually seen how teachers really uh, used even their personal time translating the materials in the Kankanae. No? Uh, in, in a small town, no, which is purely Kankanae, no, that would be, uh, that was done. No? But actually, it is not even in all subject areas. Actually, they really teach, they use Kankanae, but uh, certainly in in most of the time that they have to teach science or english or ano filipino they, they use just the same the filipino uh mr chair uh the use of the mother tongue kasi would be good if all the teachers are speakers of the mother tongue of that subject but we have also difficulty even in for the teachers because not all the teachers speak the kankanae language some are ilocano and that's that's another problem when it comes to this implementation. As I mentioned, I am an IP myself. I love my mother tongue. But uh, in, the, in the implementation of this mother tongue, which is uh, true to all, uh, we do not really have the materials. No, What we have is Iloko. I have seen it still pack. And our teachers have been using their even their personal time and even money translating po. So uh, that's why I still support the, the suspension first until such time that we really uh, produce uh, materials in all the mother tongues. Because for me, mother tongue is the mother tongue of the child and not the mother tongue of the community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chairman Margo? Yeah. Ayun nga, uh, maliwanag yung uh, explanation ni Dr. Karin. Uh. Uh, kaya yung sa atin naman, uh, we want it suspended because we really, we, we have seen na parang ito kasi batas na ito, na ginawa ito, minadali ito eh. We are not ready, we are not prepared, and the law was passed. And they have no option. Ngayon, nanganga pa tayo. Uh, at the same time, parang uh, nahirapan tayo sa pag-implement nito. At pangatlo, parang lahat ito, trial and error ang ginagawa natin, Mr. Chair. 
So I think to address this and for the good of the country and our students as well as teachers, it's high time that we suspend this and uh, proceed with the uh, total review, evaluation, and uh, the uh, com the EDCOM uh, too can, can do this job. It's very timely. Uh, kailangan dito, hindi yung, uh, yun nga, yung pinag-usapan, inclusive, okay yan. But importante yung kalidad ng edukasyon. Uh, yun ang importante. Hindi yung uh, we are so emotional of uh, considering a lot of things. But bottom line in education, what is important is not only accessibility, but also quality. Eh, ito nga, lahat ng mga test o mga assessment na pinaparticipate natin, bumabagsak tayo. Out of 69, number 69 tayo. O paano yan? How can we explain this? Uh, we might be having uh, all these things, but if we produce uh, yung mga graduates natin, uh, you know, uh, the quality is not as uh, at par with other countries. Eh, mukhang problema yun sa ating bansa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman Go. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, can uh, I respond quickly? Yes. Uh -oh. uh, yung pong... Um, Yung pong sinabi ni uh, Congressman Go, no? Kasi uh, ang problema, ang pinili lang ng Pilipinas ay English sa ano to, PISA and Teams at computerized pa yung test. Unlike kunyari sa Malaysia, uh, you know, English sa Malay, uh, sa ibang bansa, uh, Spain for example, Belgium, limang languages ang ginamit nila, no? So kung gusto natin na bumaling sa STEM, ang mga estudyante natin, dapat gamitin yung Philippines no and mother tongue sa pagtuturo ng science stem technology math ngayon hanggang social studies lang ginagamit ng ating local languages unlike sa bahasa after world war 2 talagang dinevelop nila hanggang uh, higher education ang bahasa tayo hanggang social studies lang so sana po ang isang ibang issue po kasi yon kaya kagaya siguro sa China no i mean Chinese school alam po siya ni Sir Go ano na uh, umaga ay tinuturo ang STEM sa uh, English sa hapon Chinese. So meron siyang double exposure. Ano? So siguro kung i-develop, linangin natin ang ating mga languages. Ang Philippine language hindi lang sa social studies values kundi para sa science, math. Then pwede, meron tayong maipagmamalaki sa PISA at Teams. Kasi tayo lang ang bansa na kumukuha ng PISA Teams sa English. Karamihan sa kanilang local languages. So sana po yun ang aking appeal sa DOST at kung sino man po ang mga expert uh, sa area na to. So, salamat Ma'am Ched. Uh, but just to comment on that, ano, ang intindi ko sa DEPED, but they, I will, we will ask them to explain later. Ang intindi ko kasi dyan po, pagdating sa international assessment examination, tatanungin talaga yung host, yung country, kung ano ang gusto mong lingwahe ng examination. Sa atin nga, 19 eh. So, hindi naman pe pwede raw yung 19. Kailangan hindi naman pinapayagan na 19 in, yung uh, international set will be 19 languages. So, that's why doon tayo mm -hmm. sa default na English. Yun nga yung sinasabi okay. na, again, uh, uh, when we say something po, uh, I, I think yung, yung basihan po namin is, yun ang kwento sa amin, yun ang sinabi sa amin, na kaya po <laughs> English tayo kumuha was because we were given a choice, but we have 19 uh, major dialects, we have 100... 20 uh, at least dialects that, uh, that are being ano, uh, used already, hindi naman pe pwede na mag adjust doon. That, that is why talagang totoo, pwedeng hirap tayo dahil sa adjustment na yon. Pero again, ang dami rin po natin kasing dialects. Yun yung sinasabi po namin, Ma'am Chede. Wala, we are not against the mother tongue. Ang, ang difference is, lahat ng studies na pinapakita sa amin dito, iisa lang ang dialect o iisa lang ang language. Na yun talaga ang ginagamit sa bansang yun O kaya kahit dito sa Pilipinas Ina-isolate yung sa isang lugar Na talagang yun lang ang dialect Na lahat sila yun ang sinasalita Wala kami problema Ang problema nga sa Pilipinas Hindi tayo ganoon Ang dami po nating languages Meron pa tayong migration Meron mga, meron mga Pilipino na galing sa isang region Pupunta sa kabilang region Dahil gusto nila magtrabaho doon Pero hindi nila mother tongue yung Yung salita doon, paano yung mga magmamigrate na mga uh, gustong lumipat na mga pamilya? Kung hindi naman yun yung salita nila, yun yung point lang po namin. We are uh -huh. not the mother tongue. We are saying we have to implement it properly. 
Pero right now, mukhang hindi pa ganun. But again po, no? we will we appreciate what you're saying. We will read the position papers and probably we will call upon you again. Pero tawagin ko rin po yung ibang mga okay. guests natin, Ma'am Ched. Maraming salamat po. Ah. Uh, Ms. Salamat Do- po. Salamat po. Dr. Aldrin Lee, Chairman, Linguistic Society of the Philippines. Ay, baka wala na. Dr. Aldrin Lee? Kung wala na, Dr. Carol- Caroline Dagami from the National Council Network for Deaf Organizations. You wanted to say something briefly po? Dr. Caroline Dagami? Yes po, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Uh, Honorable Chair, um, Honorable Chair Roman and everyone in the committee, Chair uh, Congressman Francis, fans and everyone po. Ito po, I'm representing the Filipino Deaf Community and uh, the National uh, Committee on Deaf Organizations and Chair and also part of the KWF unit, kami po sa Philippine Federation of the Deaf, we have around 100 uh, chapter organizations all over the Philippines. And kasama po nga, like what uh, Director Casanova said, meron na po kami unit sa KWF. And also we are part of the National, of the Feder- World Association, World Federation of the Deaf. Uh, anyway. uh, so, in not exactly, yes, sorry, so in solidarity of the deaf community with all the L1 users or the spoken language users, I respect and the MTD MLE, uh, we, we we respectfully say that it should not be suspended, but that the deaf ed should work to improve the program um, because the deaf and other L1 users, or deaf children, have experienced and all the maybe more extreme situations than other um, children who are not uh, in that situation. What do you think it is like to be taught in a language that you don't understand and to miss a lot of information and have teachers communicating to you but do not understand, but you do not totally grasp what they're saying. So uh, let's not uh, suspend the MTBML in behalf of not just the deaf, but the other L1 users. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, Dr. Carolyn Dagami. Uh, we have another, uh, could we call on uh, for a brief statement also? I, I I hope I pronounce it correctly. Mr. Firth, uh, Mr. Firth of the Education and Language Consultant, uh, an Education Language Consultant. Hello, sir. Naimbagavigat kaza tayo amin or magandang umaga po. Um, I'm first lived in the Philippines for 10 years and um, from the Multilingual Philippines Network, graduate of Ateneo de Manila University, uh, as well as Harvard. Um, Yeah, I would just like to uh, say that uh, the MPN, the Multilingual Philippines Network, supports the continuation and the improvement of mother tongue based uh, multilingual multilingual education. Uh, I totally understand the concerns of the um, congressmen who have submitted these bills. Uh, the, the, the results of international assessments um, are not, um, not encouraging. However, I would like to um, emphasize that they are not the complete story because uh, there have been many Philippine dissertations, theses, um, and studies, which I have uh, encountered through um, attending uh, research conferences that have found many positive results of mother tongue education, uh, such as classroom attendance, more active classroom participation, uh, higher child self-esteem, confidence, uh, better mental health indicators, uh, comprehension of subject content, development of literacy, uh, uh, numeracy skills, and also a positive correlation found between uh, the liter- literacy skills development of mother tongue, English, and Filipino. So we must consider these other factors when we evaluate the um, success of um, mother tongue-based education and also the local mother tongue success stories of NGOs 
uh, LGUs and indigenous groups that uh, have not been um, much discussed in the media. Um, and also, finally, we must consider the wider legal, legal implications to suspending mother tongue-based multilingual education because the Philippines government is a signatory to international human rights agreements, such as the Convention on, the, on, in, uh, on Indigenous Peoples' Rights and Convention on the Rights of the Children, which guarantees uh, um, access to first language education, including our own national laws like the uh, Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, uh, which guarantees Indigenous peoples the right to learn in their own languages. So the suspension of mother tongue instruction would violate these uh, legal rights, which the Philippines has agreed to, as well as its own uh, national laws. So I understand that uh, language education policy is a very complex and sensitive undertaking. Uh, my original birth country, although I've lived in the Philippines more than my original birth country, uh, Canada, Canada is now going through a traumatic experience um, or a reevaluation of our history because we uh, uh, did not include the first languages or mother tongues of our indigenous peoples in our education system. And while we have a developed country now, we have traumatized many ethnic groups. Um, so uh, we have traumatized many ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic groups, uh, indigenous peoples who have been deprived of their access to their language and uh, a lot of things like substance abuse, mental health problems. And so I think we need to consider all of these things. I hope the Philippines will not make the same mistake that um, my home, my birth country did to Canada. And I, uh, the Multilingual Philippines Network uh, suggests that EDCOM too do a, uh, is allowed to do its work, do their comprehensive investigation before taking any swift political action on this complex issue because it will affect millions of children. So I think we take a look at the issue with a scalpel, pre pre precise and comprehensive, rather than a jackhammer. Thank you very much. Mr. First, are you a Filipino lawyer? That you can tell us that we, viol we violate international agreements? <laughs> I'm, I'm not a Filipino lawyer, but I'm familiar so with... You, how could you conclude that we will violate international law when you don't know uh, you're not a Filipino lawyer? I mean, uh, you know, I take exception to that because uh, you're telling us, you are warning us that we will violate uh, laws when you're not even, uh, you're, you don't even know our Philippine laws. Secondly, could you just provide us with the studies that you were saying that makes this successful. Uh, we've, we've seen many studies, but, but the study we are looking for is a study saying uh, or, or showing that when you have a multi-dialect uh, society or multi-language, that it, become, it is also successful. The, all the studies that have been provided to this committee points to uh, international or even the very localized studies wherein there is only one dialect or one language being used. So we are also looking for a study showing that uh, if it's multi-language or multi-dialect, that uh, you, uh, your conclusion that it's successful uh, is indeed successful. I hope you can uh, at least provide this committee with that. Uh, with that, the next... Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Can we call on Mr. Richard Gonzalez? from the National Research Council of the Philippines. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, uh, I'm sorry I could not comment on the, I hope you can hear me, but I was asked to comment on the House Bill 4240, 3847, and 3721. I will be providing my comments when that House Bill uh, will be tackled, Your Honor. Oh, yes, yes, you're with the Aral Bill. The Aral yes. Bill. I'm with the Aral Bill, Your Honor. Yes, th thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, I, will just, I will just stand by when the Aral Bill will be tackled. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Gonzalez from L LSP, SIL International. Good morning, sir. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'll be representing our director of the Linguistic Society of the Philippines, Dr. Aldrin Lee. We already submitted our position statement. Yes. 
But I would just like to reiterate our support for the implementation of MTD MLE as we have seen how it has really uh, raised the hope of many indigenous peoples uh, being a researcher in a community-based language development uh, specialist of SIL Philippines. Actually, I'm still working with the Itneg in Laod People Group in Ilocos Norte and Abra and and in other regions, sir, including Region 3 and Region 9, SIL has been working with these various groups and they are really, sir, uh, they're putting their hope on this program because they have been marginalized for a long time and they really want to continue this program. They, The elders of the communities have, the elders of the community have been working so hard to support this project, sir, so they really want this to continue. Thank you. Um, uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, could you please state your name uh, again? Sorry, we did not get it. I'm Range Gonzalez, sir. Range Gonzalez. Ma'am Range, just, just, just to clarify, you know, what if the, the bill will contain that, at, uh, because that is what is contained anyway in the Constitution, for purposes of those uh, areas or provinces or cities or barangays, that uh, mother tongue is successful, especially when it applies to our indigenous people. That will continue. But for yeah. those places that or schools that the school mapping or language mapping has not been done properly, uh, for those uh, schools, yun yung ating i-revise o yun yung suspend. Will that be acceptable? Uh, yes, sir. I uh, I agree to that, sir. Uh, I think, sir, it's also naman din in the laws na it's the prerogative of the schools if they know what language is spoken in their particular particular school. That should be the language that should be used for uh, learning. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. With that, ano, uh, Doctor uh, Attorney Estrada. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, a very brief uh, manifestation lang po. On behalf of the Cocopea, we interpose no objection to House Bill 2188 and 3925. In fact, we support the suspension of the implementation of the mother tongue and uh, to include it in the EDCOM 2 in the discussion will benefit uh, from the... Uh, uh, we'll have the opportunity to hear and receive uh, testimonies on the ground aside, aside from researches and uh, comments and opinions from our experts. But uh, without, but without preempting the proposal of the EDCOM after the assessment and evaluation, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, meron lang po akong uh, respectfully for your uh, consideration, suggestion that in the suspension, if it is possible, the bill mandates na lang po DepEd to suspend, mandate it to suspend um, and then uh, subject to the criteria that you have mentioned, yung uh, language mapping, yung mga materials, etc. So that when it is already, it has complied with your criteria, it can uh, immediately uh, propose its uh, revival without um, without necessarily enacting another law, if that's possible. And yung pong kanina, to address yung mga tinatamad na daw, pakatama rin na, etc., that can be addressed administratively. For your consideration, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney Estrada. And of course, yung mga successful na, hindi dapat itigil. But again, ano, I think uh, uh, itong issue na to, we have to, again, still review and study all position papers submitted to us. Uh, we still want to invite uh, and siguro face to face makakita kita rin lahat kasi i'm sure there is a ano, uh, there is a middle ground somewhere eh. because lahat naman tayo we are for implementation of the mother tongue if that is the most effective pero sana we are also flexible enough to admit na dun sa mga lugar na talagang hindi naman kailangan natin i-push ang ang uh, deped to be able to uh, make it relevant there and effective pero in the meantime uh, we we should suspend in those in those uh, schools. Pero again, ano, uh, mahabang usapin. Hindi naman mahaba. May usapin pa po ito. Hindi naman natin matatapos yan ngayon araw. So with the permission of every uh, uh, everyone here, uh, we will be uh, calling for another meeting after we have reviewed all the position papers on this uh, particular subject matter. And uh, hopefully everybody is still uh, uh, will participate Gusto lang naman natin quality education. So, please participate. And, of course po, with the Department of Education, yung, yung nayap natin, ano? I think yung upskilling uh, will play a very uh, 
significant and pivotal, pivotal role. Uh, we will ask for that. Ano? Uh, of course, we also have Director Joyce Andaya still with us. Is Director Andaya still with us? Wala na. Director Andaya, kasama ka pa namin. Anyone from DepEd? Anyone from the Department of Education? Your Honor. Um, yes, uh, Joyce. Um, um, Director Joyce Andaya. Okay. I'm yes. here, but I am joined also by the uh, our assistant secretaries. Yes. Uh, ASEC uh, Almatorio and ASEC uh, J.A. Chambat po. Yes. Uh, Ma'am -ma Andaya, no? uh, I think you have listened in. Ano? Uh, we really will appreciate a lot of inputs from you, ano? to finalize whatever we can uh, do in the future about this. Ano? Pero importante talaga yung language mapping. Uh, th does the DepEd have a language mapping already? Of all, there are about, uh, how many schools in the whole Philippines? Ang DepEd schools lang. Would you know that offhand or at the estimate? Um, Your Honor, May I yield to our uh, ASEC? We have the data also, but uh, may I ask that our uh, Assistant sure. Secretary be the one to answer? Thank sure. you. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is Alma Torrio. Yes, Ma'am Torrio, kamusta po? Uh, yes. What do you know? Uh, ilan schools ba ang DepEd sa buong Pilipinas? Yes, as to the number of schools for our public schools, Uh, for school year 21-22, we have uh, a total of 47,553 schools. And for private schools, we have a total of uh, 12,624 schools. Mr. Chair. Sorry, if this is unknown, if you are the person who can respond. Dito sa 47,000 DepEd schools and 12,000 private schools, nagawa na po ba tayo ng language mapping? Yung sigurado natin kung ano yung dialect na sinasalita o mother tongue? na sinasalita sa bawat uh, paaralan nitong 47,000 plus na to? Mr. Chair, uh, as regards to our DepEd schools, our public uh, uh, elementary schools, particularly our schools, uh, our for the key stage one, uh, we, ha we had this issued a, an omnibus policy guidelines for K-12 and uh, one of the Uh, appended issue one says of that DEPID order is the, the guidelines on mother tongue based multilingual education or better known as uh, uh, MTBLE program implementation. And one of the provisions of that guidelines is for our schools to do language mapping. So personally, I presume that uh, our schools are had uh, undertaken language mapping, Mr. Chair. Ma'am Torio, no? ang naririnig ko kanina, again, or baka mali yung intindi ko, but what I understand from many of our resource guests kanina is that uh, talagang humihingi sila ng tulong sa DepEd with respect to pushing for this language mapping. Uh, alam ko, meron na kayong department order, pero one another step further would be for you to, hindi ba dapat isubmit sa central office ng bawat... Uh, Una-una, uh, from the principal to the superintendent to the regional director to the central office. Para in the central office, you would know of the 47,000 DepEd schools, more or less, malalaman po ninyo yung language mapping. Malalaman po natin kung saan may problema doon sa, sa language mapping. Kasi kanina, may isang guest po kami dito, and I'm sure you heard that uh, guest. Ang sinabi niya, na si Segre, uh, they would, uh, yung mga mother tongue na ito yung uh, dialect, isang klas yun. Yung mother tongue na iba yung dialect, ibang klas yun. Uh, uh, apparently, the, uh, that, uh, the way that is implemented is successful. So, hindi ba dapat mag magkaroon tayo ng datos na ganun sa central office? Uh, we uh, yes. Were... Oh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we will request the request assistance of our planning service kasi po sa EBIS po, personally, uh, what I understand is kasama po yung language mapping po doon, doon Mr. Chair. Yes. So, Ma'am Torio, no, uh, maybe hindi, but uh, uh, through you, could you ask the responsible person doon sa DepEd kung pwedeng ma-provide na lang yung committee nung language mapping na ito? Para alam natin, kasama sa language mapping is first, ano, ma-identify ninyo yung mother tongue doon. Secondly, yung mga teachers rin po natin sa mga schools na ito. 
do they have the same mother tongue as the one uh, uh, determined as the mother tongue of the students? Kasi kung hindi rin, uh, magkakaano eh. Uh, dun ta, baka, baka yun yung sinasabi sa amin na nagkakaroon ng problema sa, uh, sa implementation. So would that also be possible? Kasama ba yun sa language mapping? Yung from the student's point of perspective and from the teacher's perspective? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we will submit to the committee the results of the language mapping uh, undertaken by our planning service through our system. As regards the teacher, teachers, uh, it is uh, incorporated in our hiring guidelines that uh, we give priority to uh, teachers who can speak the language in the school where he or she is applying po. So naka-incorporate po yung provision just to make sure po na, na meron po tayong mag-teacher na magtuturo yung uh, lang language po yun. Ma'am Torio, paano ko? sa stage one po. Opo, ma'am, ma'am Torio, paano kung assuming lang, ano, hypothetical lang, extreme case, wala. Paano na, paano natin, how do we adjust to that? Paano kung wala? Uh, is that possible ba? Or hindi, uh, baka hindi naman tamang wala. Pero not enough teachers who speak that uh, that particular dialect. Uh, sir, Mr. Chair, uh, dun po pumapasok yung uh, training po natin sa mga teachers po. Yes. Oh, so again, important then from that point of view, no. I think si Ma'am France wants to ask questions, Ma'am Torio, Honorable oh, yes. France Castro. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, napaka enlightening, ano, tsaka, um informative yung mga sinasabi ng ating mga resource person. So, so the the, the itself, ma, Mr. Chair, tingin ko walang problema doon eh. Pero sa nakita natin yung implementation. So, napakahalaga, Mr. Chair, yung talagang language mapping. Uh, kasi nakalagay sa batas kasi, uh, Ma'am Torio, di ba, uh, may apat na level yan na, na nakalagay sa, ano, baka dapat yung ibibigay sa atin, Mr. Chair, na data ay nakabase doon sa batas nung apat na level doon sa hinihingi, doon sa MTL, MTB, BLE. Tama po ba, Ma'am Torio? Kailangan natin makuha yung language mapping. Hindi lang po yung ano, no? Hindi lang po yung yung major na language na sinasalita ng mga bata doon sa mga bawat school. Hindi lang yon yung may, may mga iba pa na talagang albay mga nauunawaan nila, yung mga uh, common na sinasalita sa bahay, uh, tsaka yung mga ganon. So yung pong yung level, uh, Ma'am Torio, pwede nyo pa bang may, maibigay po yung ano no, yung data? Mr. Chair? Yes, Ma'am Torio. Kung France, uh, sige po. Uh, noted po yung sinabi po ninyo. submit na lang po namin sa committee yung uh, hinihingi po ninyo. Ma'am Torio? In addition, ano, uh, wag, wag na tayo magkahiyaan because talagang ano, tayo, quality of education yung nahabol natin. At the end of the day, kung walang language mapping o hindi complete, you can advise the committee rin so we can move forward uh, uh, the way we should move forward. And yung akin yung pareho po yun. Uh, dapat kompleto yung from the students' uh, context ng uh, mother tongue nila, pero pati yung sa teacher. Kasi ano eh, paano po yun? Pa ang, ang question ko kasi... Uh, Ma'am Torio, no? but not for you to uh, respond now. No? Uh, uh, something to think about. Paano kung may isang pamilya na taga, taga Bicol sila? Ngayon, uh, bigla na lang naisip ng pamilya nung may mga pagkakataon, opportunities sa kanila na lumipat sa Ilocos Norte. Pagpunta nila sa Ilocos Norte ngayon, hindi naman sila mga Ilocano. So, yung mother tongue nila, hindi ano, Hindi, hindi, they do not speak uh, Ilocano. So, paano? How do we... Yun yung mga issues na, ano eh, na hindi, hindi namin uh, mag-grasp pa kung paano nare-resolvehan po yun, ano. Kasi wala tayong problema lahat sa mother tongue, eh. I, I think kung, kung isa lang yung... Kung isa lang ang mother tongue, walang problema, eh. Kung isa lang, eh. Pero ang problema nga natin, iba-iba ng Pilipinas, may migration na nangyayari, including for teachers po, ano. Can teachers not be allowed to migrate? Kunyari, gusto nilang tumira sa ibang probinsya pero hindi sila pinanganak doon. Paano kung hindi nila, ano yun, hindi nila uh, mother tongue yun? Ibig sabihin, they will have no opportunity. Wala silang freedom of, ano, of choice. Uh, wala, hindi sila makalipat, makatarbaho sa, sa ibang lugar. 
yun yung mga ano eh, yun yung mga siguro gusto lang natin malaman rin. Kasi uh, dapat may mobility ang tao eh. Pag Pilipino ka, buong bansa, citizen ka eh. You can work anywhere you want to work. Pero sinabi nyo nga, may priority. Kasi nga, may mother tongue tayo. So, we just want to ano, be enlightened on this issue, ano, Ma'am Ma Torrio. Uh, kung ano lang, ano, kung meron, o ano, please uh, provide the committee also. Yeah, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Although we are aware that uh, the mother tongue-based uh, multilingual education program started its implementation in 2009, and we can also say na meron naman mga gains na na achieve ang DepEd, we are also we also recognize na meron pong mga challenges. So, gaya po nang nasabi kanina ng ating mahal na Yusek, uh, ito po ay uh, alam na po ng ating uh, mahal na Alihim, si VP uh, Sara po. So, we are reviewing our language framework po. Yes. Sige po, uh, we will really appreciate, ano, uh, uh, inputs from from the DepEd to this committee uh, so that we can uh, uh, consider the measures being proposed. Uh, meron po ba kayo sa idadag, Ma'am Torrio, Ma'am Andaya, to the discussions or you will just submit that to the committee? Ma'am Joyce, do you want to add anything or do you prefer to submit uh, to the committee na lang? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we will respectfully submit again uh, uh, whatever data and information uh, that was uh, discussed here and agreed on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Ma'am Joyce. Ano? Uh, with that, uh, does the members have anything more to ask? Dr. Casanova? So with that, ano, with the permission of the authors and the members, we will suspend consideration of these two measures until we have been uh, until we have the opportunity to study the position papers uh, eh, any objection to that so uh, with the permission of the members still present ano pwede ko lang tawagin si ano Dr. Richard Gonzalez because he has been here since the since early on just to comment on the aral bills he just wants to comment on that para para at least hindi naman natin na aksay yung panahon Dr. G uh, Richard Gonzalez Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Honorable Representatives and all attendees. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Magandang hapon. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. So I am Richard Gonzalez. I am the Vice Chairman of the Division of Governmental Education and International Relations Policies of the DOST and RCP. And I am representing, um, along with my other colleagues, I am representing the NRCP DOST. Okay. First, um, NRCP commands the House of Representatives for um, this bill, for initiating this bill, uh, the act of establishing the ARAL program. Uh, this initiative is timely and relevant in the country because it recognizes the significant and extensive learning losses due to the school closures during the COVID-19 pandemic. We believe that the ARAL program contributes to the government's efforts to ensure an effective learning recovery program and reverse the learning crisis instigated by the COVID-19 pandemic and to mitigate the, the persistence of learning poverty that was already an alarming problem in our education system even before the pandemic. As a representative of the DOST, we believe that this program is aligned with the recommendations of the World Bank, the UNESCO, UNICEF, and the Asian Development to respond effectively to the learning losses. Otherwise, if unaddressed, these losses will threaten to create a generation of students with diminished timeline and economic prospect and continuous dwindling of national economy. So um, in the bill of our honorable uh, representatives, they uh, emphasize the learning adjusted years, okay? which we, we, we all know that um, any, any year, additional year or additional year of learning loss will really uh, have an impact on the future earnings and will trigger future economic losses. Hence, uh, we fully support these house bills whose objectives are similar. When I say the house bills, these are all the house bill 
40 to 40, 38, 47, and 37, 21, which are established free and effective national recovery and remedial programs to mitigate learning losses. Okay. Um, we propose the following actions. Okay, we have listed 10. Okay, one is, uh, you know, I, I heard the, the chairman mentioning about baseline data, school mapping, etc. And that is also one of our first, uh, first recommendation to gather a baseline data. As educationists, okay, we believe that recovery should start with assessment of students or testing students to inform teachers, schools, and educational policymakers about the seriousness and gravity of learning losses. Cognizant to the degree of learning losses will guide the teachers on where to start lessons, especially now that the schools have reopened. This baseline data will assist the policymakers in evaluating the impact of learning recovery policies such as this. This includes who would be learning and participating in the RL program. Second recommendation is we encourage re-enrollment. The House bill must provide an initiative to encourage re-enrollment, especially those students who drop out during the pandemic and are at risk of not returning due to economic challenges brought by the COVID pandemic. Third recommendation is we would like to recommend matching of teaching to student learning levels, okay? And realize that this is the essence of the ARAL program. Teaching should be tailored to students' current learning level taken from the baseline survey. The reopening of schools created classrooms that comprise students with different learning levels. Hence, the approaches must be different as well. Accordingly, we recommend that the RL program will consider what the Asian Development Bank has suggested, and ADB suggested two approaches. Okay? One, more human resource intensive, which includes which includes individual tutoring and mentoring and employing teaching assistants for smaller groups, okay? And this is what the RL, you know, I think this is the emphasis um, of, of RL. The second recommendation is that to adhere to a less human resource intensive, which includes regrouping students based on learning levels and having technology-assisted learning. Fourth, okay, and has, it has a lot of applications to, to, to our uh, DBM here, is to create plantilla positions for teaching aids for large schools. Okay, I mean large, I emphasize here, okay, I underscore here large schools to support the earlier recommendation. Okay, whether it is uh, the, the RL program will, will follow the more human resource intensive or the, uh, or the less human resource intensive track. It would be good to institutionalize individual tutoring and mentoring programs through teaching aids and assistance. Hence, the plantilla post should be created especially for large schools where regular teachers may not be able to meet the demands of the ARA program, okay? The fifth recommendation, Your Honor, is to consolidate the curriculum to focus on essential skills, okay? Which I think this is also uh, in, 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 the, in the house bills, okay? Um, consolidation of curriculum is vital to give more time to core and foundation and essential learning competencies, primarily literacy and numeracy. However, the curriculum should focus not only on literacy on, and numeracy, but also on developing the 21st century schools, including critical thinking, creative thinking, communication, and collaborative, collaboration skills of learners. Our sixth recommendation, which you, by the way, uh, Your Honor, we will be submitting this, our position letters and recommendations to you for, for, for your record as well. The sixth recommendation is that to extend instructional time or school days. Consider mandating more hours per school day, more weeks per school term, okay, uh, having weekend classes and even summer classes for students who are considered at the lowest quartile of learning competencies. Tutoring classes might be part of this. Seven is to, to support more action research for teachers. Okay? Uh, I heard my other colleagues uh, emphasizing the importance of research, particularly action for research for teachers, because action research is a powerful and robust tool for improving learning instruction. Hence, 
teachers must be encouraged to conduct more action research by providing incentives, especially when the action research is an input process or outcome evaluation of the RL program. Eight is to introduce a robust assessment program um, in the RL program. Okay, um, I'm sharing this in India. India has the citizen-led assessment, which I part, you know, I, I was able to see and participate in the citizen-led assessment uh, through the Proton Foundation has, and, and it has significantly impacted the literacy and numeracy students. Okay, the 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 citizen-led assessment. Okay, which we can use also the, the, the teaching aids as well as even citizens or community members. This could be used as a model for short, quick, and valid assessments, literacy, and numeracy. Of course, this will be complemented by the existing assessment programs of DepEd, especially for early grade students. Number nine, uh, your honor, is we are recommending to include social and emotional learning in the RL program. Behavioral scientists indicate that the individuals with strong SEL or social and emotional learning are better to cope with everyday challenges and benefit academically, professionally, socially, and economically. Including SEL in the RL is essential because through SEL, students can develop their self-awareness, self-control, and interpersonal skills, which are important for school work, for school work and life success. And of course, uh, with all this, our, our 10th recommendation is strengthening the teacher and para-teacher training. For the RL to be effective, RL program to be effective, this will, this will require the teachers, tutors, and mentors and para-teachers competencies be improved through in-service teacher training. Again, okay, uh, you, you, were, you were underscoring the, the role of NEA. Okay, and probably NAEP can, 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 can do this function because such training program must include understanding the methods to students' level and knowing how to deliver alternative learning outside the school or classroom. These are all our recommendations, Your Honor. Okay, uh, NRCP DOST will be sending uh, the, the written comments and reports, okay, including the other comments of, of my colleagues in the NRCP. Okay, thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, uh, no, uh, of course, you will be submitting your position paper. But if we have uh, in the next hearing on this uh, subject matter, we would appreciate if you would also be present so that we can finalize this RL bill. I think uh, uh, this I, I, I'll be very happy to help, Your Honor. Partly, yeah. even, you know, in fact, my other organization, Pimea, you know, uh, they had another meeting today and I was supposed to be there also because they have started the technical working group, which I am, I am also part of the, of the technical working group in the RL program at the, at, at the, in the Senate. And I'd be happy to support the Congress okay, as well, because especially in the area of you know, uh, developing the baseline data and yes. assessing okay, uh, where we are right now and where we will go. Yes, uh, we really need that. The baseline is not important. Talaga. So we have yes. to uh, come up with how to do that. Uh, and I, I'm happy because you know, I'm, I'm now back in the Philippines and I'm happy to serve my own country. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Gonzalez. With that, uh, uh, we'll suspend consideration of this, uh, the RL bills for next uh, hearing on this matter. Uh, we proceed now to other matters. Uh, is there any matter that any member wishes to bring up? If none... Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Gato. There, uh, Mr. Chair, there being no matters to discuss, I move to I move the meeting be adjourned. Uh, before we adjourn, thank you very much to all uh, members who were present and participated. To all resource persons, hopefully, po no all resource persons a eh, tuli po tayo mag attend. We really just want to come up with the the best uh, version of the bills again. Thank you to everyone. With the, there's a motion by the Honorable Gato to adjourn this committee meeting. Is there any objection? The chair hearing none. Same is approved. Thank you.